So in this video, we're gonna talk about Boogie. You guys know Boogie2988. He's like one of the most OG YouTubers. He's been around forever. I never really watch Boogie stuff. Not my vibe. But you know, we've always been rooting for him. I think you guys have seen, if you know anything about him, how traumatic his life has been, his ups and downs with his weight and health. And I saw originally Papa got reviewing this documentary of Boogie. And the whole time I was watching it, I was like, is this man a one? And then I was like, well, how could this have happened? So I want to watch the documentary with you. It's on Mike Clum's channel. I will link it in the chat. So please go like and comment on that video if you guys would like to. It's called The Dark Sad Life of Boogie 2988 Official Documentary. And again, we're going in with open mind, open hearts and compassion. We are trying to say that this is a real consciousness on the planet and me rating him as a one on introspection does not make him without dignity and without uh, a need to be respected. And at the same time, the idea of when I created the levels was to like help you as an individual be like, oh my gosh, am I boogie in the story? Because Boogie's gone downhill, he's 4 million subscribers, and he's consistently complaining about money, regardless of the bad choices he's made. And so I definitely want to have the open discourse conversation with you guys about how do we humanize him while acknowledging that he might not have his best interest in mind, while acknowledging that he's somehow specifically unique and different in a way that other people aren't. He self-destructs in a way that is very specific, and I find it fascinating. And so let's go ahead and have a conversation about him possibly being a one, possibly being just traumatized and therefore stunted. And then, you know, we'll have the conversation. Um, can I rate someone a one if I'm a one? That's a great question. Maybe. When I'm on my deathbed, the biggest regret I, ha I will ever have is knowing that I had a job that every person in the world would fucking kill for. And I fucked it up. I'm going to be mad about that till I go to the fucking grave. Okay, well, I don't know if I, people would kill to be a YouTuber because, like, you don't have to. You guys know it's free. You could just be one. You don't have to kill anyone for it. Just, like, so you know. Okay? Film documents the life of Boogie2988 following his downfall from the internet fame. Interesting. Okay. Why did I think he was going to be black? <laughs> I don't know. But Boogie, oh, I don't know why actually. Boogie's really popular in a very specific scene. He did a lot of gaming content. A lot of, he had a character named Francis that would get really upset. Um, and once again, we want to be very compassionate. Boogie gets bullied a lot on the internet now. He used to be so loved and adored. And now he's like, he just pisses people off. And a big part of it is because he complains a lot now. So let's let's just be very like compassionate towards him as a consciousness. Even though he will get annoying. You will be annoyed with him. I'm telling you, it's going to happen. For a period of nine months, I had exclusive access to his day-to-day -day schedule, personal contacts, and financial statements. Uh, there was one girl. Topics explored in this film could be upsetting to some viewers. Is the audio also pretty good, guys? I don't know if I should talk about this, Mike, but I'm going to. There Part one, going broke, in case you can't read that. There was one girl that I dated. She liked a lot of childish things. She liked rubber ducks. That's why I have some of these rubber ducks. And one of my favorite memories with her is us sitting in this tub, her playing with rubber ducks as I, I washed her, and then I, when we got out, I took her to bed. One of the best nights of my life, Mike. It happened right here. He is now facing bankruptcy and foreclosure. Yeah, so when it comes to financial approach, I don't fucking know what I'm doing. How'd you guys feel? I'm going to pause a lot. Sorry. How'd you guys feel about the way he described the girl? Um, I'll say this out loud. 
I think a lot of people can relate to this. But as we grow up as millennials or not, there is like a youngness to all of us. And so I'm not that concerned that he had like a girl who sort of have younger hobbies, if you will. But keep in mind, Boogie is like in his 40s. Money comes in, money goes out. For the longest time, my ex-wife handled that shit, but then I got divorced. I don't know where my money is. I don't know what it's doing. The only thing I've ever done with it is I threw it into crypto and then lost a shitload of it. Ooh, well, here's everything. Starting value, 750000 Crypto losses, 600000 bro. If you want to see, there's 2000 $2,758 in my bank account right now. Hey, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Is this him now? Yeah, this is him now. Um, is he covert DDLG? Maybe. I think a lot of people who have a lot of trauma have a lot of desire to be childlike. So I want to give an open option to people just being like in their trauma, people just being innocent. Also, people just being into Disney and stuffies and normal stuff. Like, I'm into anime stuff. You know what I mean? I get it. But there's something young about it. And I think it's what keeps us young. So I'm not even upset about that. But I just want to make sure it's for healthy reasons and not bad reasons, right? And let's see if mortgages come out yet. So tomorrow, when they take mortgage out, I'll have about $700 to live off of until the 20th when I get paid again from YouTube. Mm. So I'm just I going to live 21st. off of $700. And I'll probably sell some cards along the way and use that money to make ends meet as well. Mm -hmm. I have a credit card with them that I owe $600 on. Ooh. And on top of that, I still owe $163,000 on my house. Mm. I think. Okay, yes, Kenny is correct. Boogie was severely physically abused as a child. That is true. He had a severe, a really hard childhood, like a, an extremely hard childhood growing up. So just keep that in mind. I'm not sure if they're going to cover that in the documentary. But he had a very hard childhood growing up. My net worth is zero. Once you pull the equity out of the house, get rid of the house debt, sell off all my collectibles, and pay off all my debts, I think that puts me at zero dollars. You know, what's interesting, of course, is like, this wouldn't be that abnormal if you were just talking about regular people, because like, it's not everybody, right? Well, not really, but it's not a lot of people, myself included. Like, I don't have a net worth. Like what? Like obviously. So the reason it's so weird is because he used to be pretty well off. He used to be very successful. His channel should be doing very well. And I'm going to be honest with you, like uh, he should be still making more than that a month. It's actually suspicious that he isn't making at least 6K a month, 8K a month on his ad revenue alone, considering that both Papa Gut and I and our small channels, like we make relatively good money. I'm I'm currently doing much better with AdSense. Thank you guys for that. Literally, thank you by watching, clicking, like by putting little, ad, you know, just participating in the channel, you add to YouTube giving me more like ads. So thank you for that. But it is one of those things where Boogie has a big enough audience. He should be making at least six to eight K a month on a four million person channel. So why isn't he right? Weird. Super Shit. suspicious. I'm worthless. Oh. Yeah, this is the hard part. Back to reality. Oh. Mm, despite gastric bypass, Boogie continues to struggle with his weight. So many people I know who got that done, it's really hard to keep up the discipline. It is very difficult, you know? And look, morbid obesity is linked to trauma. We have to accept that as a world, like morbid obesity, extreme anorexia like Eugenia, that is linked to trauma. Boogie admits he has huge trauma from his childhood. That's not a pun. And we should take that into consideration and again, watch it with compassion. But my best feature, this is the one the ladies love. I call it my meat apron. I have two meat curtains. There's a second one. <laughs> I have two 
glorious meat curtains. I don't like showing it to people and people don't like seeing it. So that's why I'm going to die alone. Okay, fat people find love every day, relax. 2988 because of Steve Williams. Uh, well, my real name is Steve Williams. Uh, I'm known online as Boogie2988 because there's a lot of famous Steve Williamses and I'm not one of them, right? Uh, I started the YouTube channel back in 2006, right at the very beginning. Yep. And I got famous for comedy sketches as well as like life vlogs and, and just sharing my personal life with other people. Mm -hmm. What's up, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, Boogie to 988 coming at you. My ankle on my left leg and head. Um, but that's just the kind of woman I married. So give her some love in the comments section. Here's give her as much love. money as I used to make. And it's not exactly enough to make ends meet. Just this is where I Hold started. on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. 2018, his views per video were 280,000. And in 2023, they're about 17,000. If I got 17,000 views on my videos on average, I... Again, that's good money. That is still, like, good money. I don't know how he's not making money. Like, even at 17,000 views, that sucks, like, in comparison to 280,000. But that's still really good money. Like, Papa Gut makes a killing on AdSense. He does really good on AdSense. And his channel has, like, 20,000 subscribers and, like, five to 20,000 view views on a video. He just posts a lot of videos. But, like, and that's how you have to do it, right? Papa Gut gave me really good advice even about my channel because AdSense was, like, not liking me for a long time. And now it finally likes me again. So I'm slowly moving up in AdSense. But Boogie should be making at least – it depends on how he's running his channel – but he could be making anywhere from five to like 10K on that. So what's the problem? This is where I spend six to eight hours a day trying to figure out how to save my career. What's up? Ladies and gentlemen, if you do bring the 90 day control, I was going to the power of the internet. And today, let's talk a little bit about why you got to do better than I did, right? I okay. told the audience, I told Boom. you that. He's making great money, yo. He is making great money. Income is 5700 a month. He should be making more than that. He's not posting enough or something. I've told everybody, this is the center of my world right here. Ooh, expenses 7800 That's probably because he got a Tesla when he couldn't afford it. And also, he blew all his money. With my dogs, watching television, playing video games on that television. But the other day, <laughs> the audio on this TV started to go out. And whenever it would make like S sounds, it would crackle. And so I know I'm budgeting, but I immediately went to Amazon and bought a sound bar for a hundred bucks. Oh, sorry. And then the next Guys, it's on me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> You're just like watching me eat. <laughs> I'm sorry. And today the TV stopped crackling. <laughs> and now I have a hundred dollar sound bar that I don't need. <laughs> but I know I'm supposed to be budgeting right now, but because that's my TV, because that's my only source of entertainment, because it's the only thing I do, it's one of the only things that bring me peace. Like, I'm like, I have to be able to hear my fucking TV. But that's every addict, right? Like Mitch Hedberg said, I'll just do enough heroin. And then he like, OD on heroin, right? Mm. So I guess every addict tries to manage the addiction. But I don't know, man. We were talking about compulsive spending a minute ago. Yeah. Dude, I spent a lot of stuff on, a lot of money on stuff. Sure. But you know where a lot of the money went? And like it felt really compulsive at the time? Between 2018 and 2021, Boogie spent $200,000 on sex workers across the U.S. Yo, I mean, you know, as an OnlyFans sex worker myself, as a sex worker in general, I'm here for sex work. But, sir, did you have $200,000 to spend on sex workers? Sir. Sir. One of his I'm escorts agreed sex to an anonymous... Escort, and Boogie2988 was one of my clients. I'm from LA, and I get a message on this website probably guess which one from this guy who looked a lot like Boogie. 
I took women on vacations and I took them out to fancy dinners and I took them to like Disneyland and shit. He bought me dinner, he got me a purse that we were talking about over messages, and he got me a couple gift cards and he spent well over 5000 on just that night. You know the rules. The rules are we're gonna go out and eat. We're gonna have dinner. Maybe we're gonna fuck. And you're gonna enjoy a nice lifestyle that you don't normally get to enjoy. Oh, I'm sorry. So he was really funny. Boy, And you're gonna enjoy a nice lifestyle that you don't normally get to enjoy. Oh! Did he just say that he's gonna let the sex worker enjoy a lifestyle she doesn't normally get to enjoy? When this is her job, so would she normally get to enjoy it? Or does he specifically choose sex workers that are like survival sex workers, so they're down and out? And then he's saying that, what is he saying? You know what I mean? Oh my God, cast member for one month, let's go. Oh look, I got a milestone. She says, yes you did. Thank you for being here, girly. I appreciate it so much. But yeah, what he just said just now feels a little like, I, that same reason, like, I don't know how y'all do it, escorting, because, like, these customers, man, like, I gave you this thing you've never experienced. And I'm like, if this is literally her job, she probably does this once a week. So he was really funny. I can definitely tell he was nervous. Um, he did eat a lot of food. I'm pretty sure he got two entrees, which was very unique. Why not? Enjoy. It's not a revelation. I like beautiful women. I like to hang out with beautiful women. Fuck beautiful women. We all do. I never got to do that. The women I dated were pretty, sure. But they were like Arkansas eights, <laughs> not LA tens. With sugaring, I got to fuck some LA tens, and I think that's cool. I mean, yeah, if you're like, I think that's cool to fucking LA 10. I think that's an indication of being stunted that you would think it's cool to fuck somebody who's pretty. Like, you know, yeah. Mm. We got back to the hotel mm. and I do regret to say that I slept with Bookie 2988. Overall, the experience, and I don't mean to fat shame. Why did she regret it? Or anything. But there was rules upon rules upon rules, and it took me a lot of time to find a stick. Okay. Whoa. That's a little body shamey for me. And experience, and I don't mean to fat shame or anything. But there was rules upon rules upon rules, and it took me a lot of time to find a stick. Yeah, well, you know, fucking well fat is hard. It might take you a second to find things, okay? But as a sex worker, you have to know what you're signing up for, which means she probably was desperate, which means he probably could, he probably didn't get an LA-10. Can we be real? I feel like he's probably not getting an LA-10 escort. He's just saying she is because he's saying he dated Arkansas eights, which is like, you know, what does that mean? So if she's sitting here and complaining about her customer, um... As if she didn't, like, again, did she pick him because she was desperate and therefore did he find, it's just like there's a lot of layers here that I feel like we're not talking about. You know what I mean? I am not married with two kids and sleeping with Boogie is one of the reasons I quit sex work. Sleeping with Boogie made her quit sex work? The income from her night with Boogie helped her fund her nursing degree. Okay, that's pretty dope. Yeah, that's pretty dope, actually. Is that sexist to me? Sure. Is that womanizing to me? Sure. I don't really care. Um, I'm a 48 year old man. I never got to fuck a model. This let me fuck a couple of models. Is that wrong? Okay, first of all, there's no way he fucked a model. He couldn't afford it. I, well, maybe he could have $200,000. And second of all, he's 48 years old. I thought he was 40, not 48. Okay, so he's nearing 50. But also, this is so sad. Like, this is why you need therapy and philosophy and values. And you need to learn, like, how not to be pathetic when it comes to women 
and relationships and sex and your dignity. There's no dignity here. He puts down women because he lacks self-love. Exactly. There's no dignity here. There's no uplifting. There's no gratitude. There's just like, yeah, I paid her. She works for me. There's no like dignity here from her either, by the way, from her either. Here we have some of the women in this area that are local and ready to go out. They'll um, go to dinner with Can you. they be showing their photos? You, they'll go to a show with you. Maybe they'll come back to your place. But they are expecting something in exchange. Uh, but then it's window shopping, right? Like any other meat market like Tinder, you kind of scroll down the, the list of photos until you find someone that looks interesting to you. I think this girl is really cute. Oh yeah, yeah. She's definitely a little thicker than I necessarily would always go for, but there's nothing wrong with that. So I deserve to go to Disneyland with a beautiful girl, right? I deserve to go to, to New York and explore Times Square with a beautiful girl, right? Like I deserve that and I want that and I've never had it. Man, if I had that money back, that would be half of my mortgage right now. That thousand dollars is my entire health insurance payment. I don't know what the prostitutes did with it, and I hope they spend it in, in good health. Uh, but I sure could use that shit right now. <sighs> Sir. <laughs> <laughs> Where do we think he is on the introspection spectrum, guys? <laughs> Sir, if you don't, <laughs> if you don't, <laughs> like, sir, yeah, why do you deserve it, bro? What is this idea? I deserve people's bodies. I deserve people's bodies. Where does this narrative come from? Bro, maybe he is a one. I'm just, I'm not saying he is. I don't know. But if he doesn't get his shit together, it gets worse, guys. We are only 10 minutes in. This gets worse. <laughs> I saw parts of this earlier, like I said, because of Papa Gut. But I was like, I got to stop watching this and watch it with my audience. It gets worse. Okay. You know? What, you want to go for a walk? So you can, he knows. He know, you can't tell me he doesn't know. <laughs> Leo up, baby. I know. We'll go in a second. I gotta prep your brother. He's great. He's actually, I, I actually really love him a lot. Leo! I know how much these things mean to you. What's it like to have to sell them to be able mm. Wait, how do we define ones? Okay, I'm not gonna like review my whole introspection level system, but basically, one is a person who has all the resources acceptable, accessible to them, has given been given opportunity after opportunity, but it remains useless to themselves and their community at the same time. Ones are not people whose mental illness made them lose it, right? So you couldn't look at somebody with like a disability or a mental illness and be like, oh, they were one because they had schizophrenia without meds and ended up homeless. Like that's not a one. You know what I mean? That's somebody who's suffering from schizophrenia. I'm talking about somebody who has accessibility, resources, communities, support groups, money, access to money, and still manages regardless of trauma and mental illness. So it has to be separate from that. It has to be like a choice they're making that they choose to be useless to themselves and the people around them. The example we give is a man who's, you know, starving in the desert, which is why we have our cupcake emoji here, guys. Okay. A man who's starving in the desert and someone comes up to them and goes, here's a cupcake. And they go, oh, no, I can't eat that. And it's like, well, hold on. Like, here's a cupcake. Like, I can help you. And it's like, mm, no, no, like I'm not, no. And it's like, bro, eat the cupcake. And Boogie isn't eating the cupcake, right? Are ones like the snake from the Garden of Eden? No. The snake from Garden of Eden is Satan, girl. She know what he doing. What do you mean? No, ones are like people who like regardless of what they've been given still can't manage to eat the cupcake. So you can't, you, like his trauma from his childhood can't be the reason he's 
making these decisions. If that's the case, then you just say this is trauma, right? But trauma isn't always the right answer. It's not the reason we do things alone, right? Introspection comes into how we handle that trauma. Lots of people in my audience have been traumatized and still manage to get their shit together. So, and then some people who are traumatized don't, but it's not related. Like it is related. Sorry. It is related. And that's why they're ones. Not, not ones. Sorry. Oh, this is hard to explain. Do you guys get it? We'll get into it. We'll get into it. We'll get into it. Able to live. So selling off these things kind of sucks because I've been playing magic for 30 years. And some of the cards in this box I opened back in 1994, I opened them in like 96 and I've held on to them ever since. And that's a, like, they're a piece of my childhood. They're a piece of my history. I thought I was going to get buried with this stuff. This is, this is my stuff. This is me. This is part of me. And uh, I made some money off of YouTube last month, but I did not make enough a sponsor or something. YouTube, he made twenty nine fifty. There's he should be making way more than that. Two thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars off AdSense alone. There's no effing way. He should be making way more than that. Hold on. He should be making way more than that. That doesn't make any sense. Let's go to, I'm on his channel. 23 hours, 23, one day ago, two days ago, eight days ago. 32, 36,000 views. That's interesting. I wonder, he's posting, he could be posting more, but he shouldn't be making that little of revenue. Oh, he's not posting enough still. Uh uh. So he does need to post more, but he should be making more than that. He gets so many more views than me. And. I'm not making that much on AdSense yet because they just started paying me again in a real way. But I should be, I'll probably be making that much in like, I don't know, a little while. Not that, I don't know how to predict it, but it can't be that long because at the way that it's going up, it's working out. Now I have memberships and I do perks and I do a lot of things for my audience that maybe he's not doing. But AdSense alone should be paying him something. So the fact that he's only making twenty nine fifty off that kind of view count doesn't make sense to me. Papa Gut shared his revenue publicly on a stream and he makes much more than that, like a little bit less than double of that on AdSense alone. So, and I think membership. So he shouldn't be doing this. He, that's what I'm saying. Like he shouldn't be making this little of money. You know what I mean? Like that, I just, I'm not making enough. So we're gonna go mm -hmm. to the game shop, but this is gonna keep me from going out on the, on the streets, right? Like this is gonna keep me in a house. See, he's like, I'm avoiding homelessness. You could just like get a job. Like I said, every YouTuber I know, we have like multiple jobs or we work all the time. We just work all the time to make money. It feels like he probably got to the point of making so much money that he thought he was set. That's what I'm trying to tell you guys. Just because you've made a million dollars or five million dollars, if you're bad with money, it could disappear in a second. FouseyTube made seven million and was gone within a few years. Boogie made a million, a million, two million, and it was gone. So remember, like, just because you've made money doesn't mean you've made it. And I think a lot of people take for granted. That's why I love ABBA so much. Oh, I love him so much. I have nothing bad to say about ABBA ever. But ABBA literally talked about that where, you know, he's not under the assumption he'll always have this job. So he saves everything. He puts it all away, doesn't care, doesn't spend his money really. He's very humble because he is not making the assumption he's made it. Even though people are like, ABBA, you've made it. You have 2 million subscribers. He's like, so? What if YouTube like kicks me off tomorrow? What if I lose my channel? What if I don't? So ABBA is like, he knows what he's doing. ABBA is being smart about his money. That's why he's like trustworthy in a lot of ways because ABBA takes care of himself and his family. Boogie, Fusi, these other people. And to be fair, they both suffer from mental illness in a very significant way. So it might be not so much like the introspection, though I think that always plays a role. It could just be mental health. You know what I mean? They obviously don't know how to keep their money. So... I think it's bittersweet. I think he would find it bittersweet. He would have wished I'd. I'm selling magic cards on whatnot. I'm selling collectibles on eBay. I'm selling arcade machines locally. I'll sell it all. And I'm gonna sell enough to help with mortgage, but I'm also gonna sell enough to be able to play magic tonight. Cause I don't want people wondering why I'm not there. I don't want people like knowing I'm broke. Like that's embarrassing. If he doesn't want people to know he's broke, he probably shouldn't be on the internet telling us. Hi, Tom Foolery. How are you? Happy Halloween. I can't afford $30 to play Magic. 
So I'm spending 30 bucks to play Magic tonight. Okay, so this month I need from you about $1,000 to make mortgage. So I need you to pick out like $1,000 for the stuff. Like there's a couple of cradles in there. Mm -hmm. There's a city of traders in there. Well, I could do 200 a piece on those. What? Dude, I thought we were looking more like 400, 450 on each of these. 175 is what it's down to. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yo, this guy's Dragon Ball Z shirt, though. Let's go. Those Good lord. Took that took a beating. Fuck. These are reserved list cards, Glenn. Yeah. They're not going anywhere but up. Okay. Well, you say that, but the dual lands went down. Good for Glenn. Stick to your guns, Glenn. I mean, yeah. All right. As long as I'm getting mortgage money, as long as I'm getting some cards here tonight. Okay. You, you do you, you gave me these back mm -hmm. you know to sell on until i come back in here because i'm not going to sell them anybody else for you okay two no make it three chicken quesadillas what's paying for this shit you're paying me back on my hair <laughs> that don't hurt yeah we all look the same in a game shop <laughs> it's because we're fucking outcast it's not funny but i how, how do you have four? That's what I'm saying. How do you, these big YouTubers, I love them so much. I just want them to find their peace and meditate and love themselves. But like when they feel like their channel's falling off or they're not doing good enough or they're not making enough, like Boogie went straight negative, right? And I wonder if they just like live to a certain standard of existence and then realize they have to be humble and they don't know how to do it again because they went so hard on the celebrity vibe. I know after he had a divorce with his ex-wife, that was like a... Like they, I think there was too much toxicity from Boogie that she couldn't handle it. So they got divorced. From my understanding, I could be wrong. I think after the divorce from the ex-wife, he did kind of go crazy. Bought a Tesla, spent all his money, was really reckless, went to prostitutes. So I think that we obviously saw that it, he didn't take it very well because he's terrified of dying alone. And I understand that. Absolutely. But I also think there's something bigger happening here. And it's not just that Boogie's fat. He keeps saying it's because I'm fat. I'm alone. Have you seen America? Everybody's fat and people are doing fine. Like, yes, fat people get a lot of criticism and less love. But if you go to fat parts of America, they're also dating and married to fat people. And they all have fat kids. So fat people find love just because you're fat and don't find love. Don't put that on the rest of us. I just feel like that's not fair. That's like, that's not fair. Because, okay, like he was married. Somebody did love him. So, is that really the reason you got divorced, sir? We're in a kind of small town. We're fucking autistic as shit. We're awkward around women. We're awkward around people. We don't know what the fuck we're doing. And then I come back here and I'm looking at all the shit I need to sell. And I'm surrounded by all the shit that I bought for YouTube videos and stuff. And it's hard to not think about what a fuck up I am. But that's why I go to the arcade. That's why I go to play Magic. That's why I have my friends over. Because for just a few hours, I'm not that fuck up from YouTube. I'm just- Meditate. Steve Williams. I'm just me. Oh, this is, this is my Saturday night crew. We get together every Saturday. We eat pizza, we play Magic. The way I can smell this room. The way the autism, just the aroma of the tism, and I mean that with love because I absolutely, this is, okay, I get it. Tabletop games, magic, d and D. I I know. I love dating a DD and d nerd, let me tell you, okay? Let me tell you, but. Magic, we play board games, we do Smash Brothers. <laughs> Magic the Gathering, this is my crack, this is my cocaine. I met him at the magic shop. I met him in the magic shop. Now him, I met at the magic shop. This guy, I met at the magic shop. This guy I met uh, at the magic shop. Love it, let's go. This guy I met because he was a roommate with a friend I met at the magic shop. Okay, so I have a million dollar question for you guys. Every Saturday we get together. Mm -hmm. Every Saturday I order what? Pizza, chicken fingers. Are you guys offended because I said the room smelled? Oh, please. You know gamer boys barely shower their greasy ADHD hair. 
please, I've dated enough of these boys to be like, get in the shower. Don't even lecture me right now. <laughs> Tacos. Those are the things I normally get, right? Like, I normally spend like $100, $150 every Saturday to like feed us. And like, I showed them my bank books today. And I'm not like, I've never wanted to burden you guys with this. But like, I'm at a point where saving $300 a month would be useful. I mean, we've, we've been telling you for years that we don't care about the food that much. Okay. Yeah. Like, don't, like, don't get me wrong. I like having snacks and soda when I'm over here because I don't eat those at my house. Right. But we've, I mean, we definitely said it throughout the years. Like, you don't have I, to feed us, but I know you, you, you I do know. it anyway. So when are we going to start bringing girlfriends around? Also, when are we going to start? Girlfriends, girlfriends, girls, girls. The boy is obsessed with girls. How do you surround your whole life, like your whole personality around girls? Mm-mm. No, ma'am. This reminds me of my dad. I'm low-key getting, oh, no, I'm getting low-key triggered. I have very little patience to do this to them. Wait, I have very little patience that this, wait, oh, I can't read, Brittany. I have very little patience that do this to themselves and then want everyone around them to constantly feel bad for them. Oh, it's exhausting, let me tell you. Yeah. That's like the worst part. You know what I mean? Now, it's interesting that he's finally admitting to his friends that he does need help with the bills and the money. Boogie feels like, like the kind of guy who kind of like feels a need to pay for his friends, but he probably didn't need to. Um, but he probably does only because of his attitude. I bet it came to the point where Boogie had to pay for his friends only because his attitude moved people away and people felt bad for him. He's just a negative Nancy. And it's hard being around negative Nancys. You know what I mean? It's just, it, it's, there's a whole part of this that's like, I'm sure everyone around him is like relatively sweet, but you know what I mean? There is something about always being negative and always being like, I'm the, you know, da, 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 I'm the worst kind of person. And every, my life is so hard and I just can't ever, you know what I mean? Especially after bragging that like, oh, I'm a YouTuber, I'm an OG, blah, blah, blah. And so I, I assume he uses money to kind of keep people around, but I bet if he was just like, Nice to be around like he used to be. He wouldn't have to. The boogie we knew for many years was really lovely. Until he wasn't, apparently. But I don't know. Maybe that was a facade. Start bringing girlfriends around that aren't hookers. <laughs> Start bringing girl girlfriends around that aren't hookers. Because that's all I've brought around for five years. I mean, like, we haven't had, like, legitimate girlfriends over in a long time. You haven't dated in, in a while. <laughs> you haven't dated in a while. I mean, yeah, a while out. That's fair enough, yeah. I mean, you've, you've like had some, I think you've had like a time. I think he's a good guy, yeah. I think that Boogie's definitely a, a good guy. Uh, he loves his friends and his family and he cares about people a lot and he cares about what people think about him a lot. He's a fun person to be around and to laugh and make jokes with. And sometimes we open up and we have like really personal conversations and- Yo, I, I want some pizza, bro. That pizza looks so enjoy good. Enjoy getting to know him in that way as well willing to do things for us. He's offered to, you know, take care of us or offered us a room if he needs it. Um, he's still gonna make some of the same jokes. You know, we all have a sort of dry sense of humor. Sincere kindness, uh, it's, it doesn't always show up, but uh, he, he does have a lot of a lot of compassion for people. That... I think he's just a guy <laughs> with good and bad. Yeah. But I don't think he's as bad as a lot of corners of the internet think he is. I think as long as he stops tweeting the N-word, he'll be fine. <laughs> Ma'am? <laughs> the N-word is just a word. If you guys left and these cameras weren't rolling and I was sitting here alone in the dark and I said the N-word, there's no magic power to it. So say it. Oh, no, I'm not going to say it on camera where it could hurt somebody. I like offensive humor. I like dark jokes. I say fucked up shit. I think the darker something is cancer, rape, murder, child abuse, the darker it is, the more important it is to make jokes about it. I mean, okay, sounds like a cope. <laughs> sounds, I, so, okay, there's two types of people that are like, I love dark humor. Copey people who want to be edgy and want to say anything they want. And then on the other side of that, like, um, people who kind of mean it, like, I would say like, oh, my friends and I have like pretty funny dark humor, but I, 
I'm, I think I'm self-aware enough to understand like it's all bubbles, but like he isn't self-aware enough not to say this out loud a little bit. Like this is a red flag to me too. Like I see you putting that red flag. This feels like a red flag where I'm like, mm. Sounds like copium, bro. Sounds like copium a little bit. And it's like, you know what I mean? It's like, like the way he says it feels like he's coming from the perspective of like wanting to be naughty because he knows it's bad versus like, oh, I genuinely just think like it's a word sound. He's like, no, I, I love dark humor. You know what I mean? So it feels like he's coping. And also he was complaining at one point, I think in this documentary about sponsorships. I don't remember where I heard it. Maybe in this documentary sponsorships and like people don't give me sponsorships. Oh, actually, I think he's about to mention it now. And I'm like, well, do you think maybe sponsors hear you say that and then go, I don't want to give you a sponsorship? Because do you do you get it? Like, do you know what I mean? Now, to be fair, we talked about this a few videos ago with Rosanna and Mr. Beast and the version of authenticity. When we as an audience say we want authentic YouTubers, he's being, I guess, authentic. I think it's not authentic, though. I think it's a cope. So it's less authentic. But do you think this is him being authentic? And then do you think we as an audience don't want authenticity? We want him to lie to us so we don't hear him say his weird stuff out loud. And then that's the question we need to ask ourselves as an audience, right? We want to be open and compassionate. Like, is he unaware that like, don't say that on the internet. Shush, be quiet. Like, even if that's your thought, you know, shush. But like, also we want authenticity. So maybe this is him trying and then we're, we're as an audience proving people right by saying like, we don't actually want you authentic. We want you to pretend you didn't say this. That's the question we need to ask. But yeah, it feels like huge copium from Boogie in my opinion. He sounds like an edgy, like an edgelord. He's like, I want to talk about things that are edgy. Yeah, I guess. But like. I feel, I'm sorry you had to go through that. Bro. Yeah, that's okay. All right. I mean, I didn't go through it. I'm still watching. She's dead. And uh, yeah, so fuck her. And now she's dead. That's a lot of money, I guess, for a person. Of and, uh, yep, yeah, so fuck her. And now she's Mocking the death of his deceased girlfriend. I'm still alive. She's dead. Yeah, so fuck her. She's, now she's dead. Why? What did she do? She's dead. That's a lot of money, I guess, for a person of color or... Thanking a minority fan for their donation. That's a lot of money for a person of color. <laughs> donates i'm gonna be like are you sure you can afford that sweetheart <laughs> oh fuck is it not i don't know someone says you can't put your finger into a clitoris somebody here doesn't have a scalpel handy you splay that fucker just right you can wrap it all around your fingers you just gotta sir 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 you gotta shave real thin Woo! That's disturbing. That's the most fucked up thing. I've no, I plan to shoot you, bud. Please. You pointing a gun at me? Yes. Okay, this guy came to his house. Uh, basically, like stalked him. Cause came to his house and Boogie pulled a gun on him and handled the situation badly. But this guy should never have come to his house. Okay, so just in like just for perspective, Sniper Wolf drove by Jack Jack's house and took a picture. This guy showed up at Boogie's door and rang the doorbell. Is this what we have to do? And then he shot a warning shot into the air, which is not how you use a gun. Where it really went south is when one guy spent like a month of his time gathering every link, every video clip, everything I'd ever said or done since 1998, and he compiled it into this one huge mega thread. It's like 10, 15 pages mm. long. And every time my name would get mentioned on Reddit moving forward, they would all link to that mega thread. Well, these people on Reddit began to bombard my sponsors to make me look as bad as... Well, see how he said that? They bombarded my sponsors to make him look bad in defense of the sponsors. You just said out loud that you basically love to say the N-word, which don't get me wrong, we all love to say words. 
but as a sponsorship, they don't care about what you love. They care about how they make you, they, you make them look. He would like you're not even self aware enough not to say stuff that's going to get you not a sponsorship. That you said all these things about women, and now you're talking about going to prostitutes, like, and all these women, like you deserve pretty women, sir. You know who's going to work with you? What sponsors? Like, yeah, let's work with the guy that like says the n word slash hires prostitutes and and treats them like a meat market. This is a sickness. Yes, it is. Quoting our fave Abba. Oh my God. Possible. Every time I got a new sponsor, they would bombard me. And uh, eventually they dropped me. Okay, annual income for 2018 was 490,000, 2019, 152, 2020, 72, and 2021, 46, and 2022, 26,000? <clears throat> How? 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 Why? That's crazy, though. $2022, 26000 How? How is that possible? On AdSense alone, he should be making more than that. Unless YouTube uh, actually maybe ads didn't want to be on his videos. Actually, maybe he effed himself up so badly that even YouTube ads didn't want to be associated with his brand. Mr. Dark Humor, 2006. Are you ready? Are you ready to step back into 1988? You ready to go back to my childhood? Because that's what's behind the star. You know what, do you want to know what this represents to me? This is everything that was good about my childhood. And when I walk back in here, it's like going back in time, except things aren't completely shitty. So this is the classic. I mean, I even have a Pac-Man tattoo. This is the game I most identify with because it's about a little round guy running through a maze trying to figure shit out. Mm. Britt says if he was wise with his money, this wouldn't be an issue. You know what? If he was wise with his money, it wouldn't have gone down as much. Or even if it had, he would have been prepared. But being good with your money is also being self-aware about sponsorships, about what you say on the internet, about apologizing correctly, about self-awareness. It's like he's not understanding that all of his problems out, outside of his childhood trauma are basically self-inflicted. So I'm waiting to see. How do you guys feel so far? Is, is this like trauma related to his childhood or do you think this is like self-inflicted at this point or do you think he's just not willing to admit he's made a mistake again we're only 20 minutes in we've got about 30 minutes to go eating everything in sight and getting chased by ghosts of his past so i'm basically pac-man i know it's simple fun and uh i mean look at the guy he looks like me uh, i i might have sprained it or broken it or something. I was walking to the bathroom in there and that sucks. There was a loud <laughs> snap sound and things kind of shifted in one direction. And now my foot is swelling into my shoe and it hurts really badly. It's the fun part about being old and fat. You never know. You don't know if you'll wake up tomorrow. You don't know if Today is that stroke or heart attack you've been waiting on. Mm. Or if it's going to be a healthy day and you feel real good for change. You never know. Mm. So I don't know. You can fucking be today. Do I think I'll make 50? Yeah, probably. That's only two years away. Do I think I'll make 60, which is 12 years away? Probably not. Here's everything that's wrong with Boogie. Do you think that's related to him giving up? Is that he thinks he's going to die? Low testosterone. Testicular hypogonadism. Sleep apnea. Swelling due to blockages of lymphatic flow. Seboric eczema. Chronic back pain. Protein in urine. That's from kidney damage, folks. That is everything keeping me alive. We have Losartan, Tramadol, Buprofen, Sertraline. Uh, did I, I deal with back pain? I deal with nightmares? 
I'm always tired. I don't know the last time I did sleep. Otherwise, if I don't wear this machine at night, when I'm supposed to be sleeping, I'm actually drowning in my own fat. Uh, high blood pressure, history of gastric bypass, mm -hmm. intestinal malabsorption, vitamin D sufficiency, because like most gamers, I hate the sun, Kay. morbid obesity, major depressive disorder, major anxiety disorder, mm -hmm. history of diabetes mellitus, blood pooling in veins, varicose veins of the legs with complications, degeneration of lumbar or lumbosacral interver intervertebral disc. That means my back. Yo, is Bookie rocking the Crocs though? Okay, let's go. History of basal cell carcinoma, that's cancer. And of course I can't breathe so good. Yeah, he had cancer a few years back, didn't he? So asthma and allergies as well. So it's a waiting game now. And it's just about making the best of it. Yeah, that attitude of like, it's a waiting game. It always was the moment you were born. The moment you were born, you began to die, right? So the idea of like, he's saying it like it's significant. It's just a waiting game. Sir, it was always a waiting game. What changed? What changed? You just enjoy what you got when you got it. Sometimes that's a chicken quesadilla. Sir, no more bread, period. I've knocked bread out of my diet, people, because I'm trying to cut back five to 10 pounds. Let's go, boogie. Cut the bread out of your diet, my bro. That's the problem is like, it's a self-fulfilling cycle, right? If he stays fat, then he can stay sick and he can stay complaining and he can stay begging for money. If he gets better and works on his health and actually wants to live and actually wants to have a good life, then he actually has to take some responsibility for the way that his life has gone. I wanted to make... Oh, the guy who did the documentary took a break because the mood was overwhelmingly depressing. Like a documentary that was generally entertaining, he realized, wait a second, everything he says is depressing. Everything he says is like the saddest shit I've ever heard. That would be half of my mortgage right now. $10,000. And it's just about making the best of it. This is the first documentary we're, I'm doing. I can't put out a documentary that's this guy the whole time because I don't want my brand new channel uh, to be known as making documentaries about the most depressing people that oh. exist. It's oh. just like, what Damn. the fuck happened to this guy? Mm. What the fuck happened to Boogie? What? I hired a health counselor? No, I invited a mental health counselor, a comedian, and a YouTube consultant to assist in analyzing Boogie's downfall. Okay. Well, he's losing what made people originally like him. It, it could be as simple as Consultant. just that. Two million subscribers. Positive attitude. Why not use your only life to make the lives around you better? Fuck you, it's none of your fucking business. It's my body, it's my choice, eat shit. And over time, in the content, we see this shift where he starts to become more interested in money. I just oh. like making content. I Wait, we know that guy. He, I don't watch him, um, but we know that guy. Content. We see this shift where. That's Dr. Todd Grande or whatever. He he has a. I don't watch him, but I know him from YouTube. He starts to become more interested in money. I just like making content. I just like talking. If Dr. Honda walked out, I would have been shook. Looking to a camera. I just like doing cool stuff. I just want ad revenue. I just want YouTube to pay me a fair amount. It's all I've ever wanted, right? And his concerns about money. If I could teach you anything, it's to hold on to the money you get. Oh, are you trying to manipulate people into giving you money? The answer is yes. Give me some money. And more interested in complaining. I couldn't be more grateful. I couldn't be more grateful to people. Want to come? Thank you. I'm a walking embarrassment, dude. We do. Look at me. I'm fucking disgusting. Better I'm a piece of shit. I will never function 
the way you function. It's not possible. Um, that's why if you're griping to your viewers, if you're complaining to your subscribers, I mean, that just leaves a sour taste in people's mouths. I think my window's closing. And if it's not closing already, it's, it's already closed. Right, so if there was money to be made. Ooh, he is too honest. Is he too honest? Is he, is that the problem? Is he being too honest? Or is it the honesty is kind of like, but it's kind of like negative honest. Cause like, look, I'll be honest with you. If you like my channel and subscribe and leave me comments, that does everything you need to do. Like that is like amazing. YouTube loves that. But I don't need you to directly, like it'd be great if you signed up for Discord, but like, I don't think he's being honest. Like you don't need direct money from your viewers. You need them to like the streams and subscribe. That is where the money comes from is ad revenue. If he's making money on ad revenue alone, he doesn't need your money. He needs you to like and subscribe and leave comments for the algorithm. So it costs you nothing, but YouTube pays us. So I, I don't know why he's saying, give me money from his audience. How do they give him money? Why is he asking them for money unless he does like, does he do like a Patreon perks or something? But if he's saying I need money from ad revenue, then it shouldn't cost his subscribers anything except them being active in the chat and stuff. So why, why do, does he need like, we need views. We don't need anyone's direct money necessarily. Like it helps, like, you know what I mean? But if he's, if you're just doing AdSense, which he's claiming to do, I'm confused. Why is he saying that? Does he know that AdSense doesn't need money from subscribers? Or is he saying memberships? Because that costs money. And that's AdSense technically. I don't know what he's saying. You know what I mean? Ma'am, are you going to go to, how are you going to move to Europe and give up bread? No, no, no. It's guys, you don't understand. I was eating like a lot of bread every day. And I'm holding like five to 10 pounds of weight around my middle. I got to get rid of before I bulk up. So I need to lose it and the best way to do it is to cut bread for a bit and pastas and focus on chicken and vegetables. You know how it is, girls. This is just the cut. It's normal. I'll go back to bread after I'm done cutting, but I won't be eating a loaf a day, but it's so tempting because it's so good and it's so warm and it's so crispy here, but you have to have the discipline and I don't when it comes to bread. Oh, it's so good. There's this cornbread. It's like thousand. It's like we looked it up on the internet. How much, how many calories it was? Guys, it was so many calories. Like almost a thousand calories in just a bread and I could eat like one or two of those a day and I wouldn't have anything else to eat. So, okay, trust me, I know bread is good here, okay? I don't think it's honesty. I think he's searching for pity. His currency is seeing people feel bad for him. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think he's more like being negative and that's what's so off-putting. That's probably what's so off-putting. You know what I mean? And making people feel depressed. Yeah. I think Boogie would be in the right business. Like that's just my life philosophy at this point. Just face down in the mud. That's that's pretty much how we live our lives. Oof. That that's right around the corner. Like I have to sell this place. I have to, it's I a have nice to house. tap into the equity to survive. Like that's the last of my money. And Medical bill is $650. Let it go to collections. Just don't pay it, boogie. <laughs> Account so balance is negative $73. How? See, here's the problem. When the average American is living off 3K a month and he's making 6K a month, we're all looking at him like, why are you in debt? And we know it's because he has a Tesla. It's like an $800. No, no. His Tesla, I think, is as almost as much of his mor mortgage. I think it's like $1,700 a month. He needs to get rid of his car or sell his home and downsize, but he's not doing any of those things. And that's the problem. Money is going to doctor's appointments and tests. And yeah, but he, no. This is why he doesn't feel honest because he keeps saying it's medical bills, which should give us like, oh no, his medical bills. But it's not because we know he owns a Tesla. And I, I, did he say it in this video? I know in another video he said it's like $1,700 a month. And then his mortgage is $2,200 a month. And he's making $5,700 a month. So yeah, uh, like Amber said, medical debt, the least of our problems here. Literally, let it go to the collections, pay the pennies to the dollar, like just figure it out later. Fuck, fuck medical bills, okay? Let it go to collections. But like, all, all your other stuff, sir, like we're not even 
what are we doing? Like, why are we driving a Tesla and not a Honda? You know? All of that. Maybe he's an addict. He said he was. To be fair, Boogie identifies as an addict. And I think that's very important because it's true. And so, again, on my levels of introspection, if he's an addict for real, real, and he's genuinely saying I'm struggling and it's my addiction, then he's not a one. He's suffering from addiction. And he's too in the loop of his addiction to even have time to be introspective because again introspection is like a privilege and so though people who are struggling can be introspective and find that moment to do it you don't have to be rich or educated to be introspective that's not what I'm saying you just have to actually be willing to take the time out some people are willing to like literally because they have some negative $73 in their account go I'm just going to be introspective and like change my life some people don't though they drown more in the pain and the destruction of their negativity which makes sense like it's it's very difficult to get out of that loop when you feel like the world's crashing around you so maybe boogie's just suffering from like intense addiction and trauma and mental health and he can't even think how could i be better maybe let's keep watching it's just to fucking stay alive oh yeah he talks about having to buy video games i think he's going to talk about that i haven't heard him say it yet but yeah i remember that from papa guts stream It's not just to stay alive, though. Well, that's the problem with severe obesity. It's obviously like trauma related and he's gotten help before for it. But everyone who spends any time with him can't handle it, even his ex-wife. So is he unhelpable? Is that a thing because he won't help himself? There are plenty of different content creators to have various mental illnesses all over social media. And some just say, it is what it is and this is what I'm going to do. Boogie tends to be really obsessed with this idea that it's favorable to have people feel sorry for you and that kind of victim uh, mentality where you can get further in life if uh, people have compassion on you regardless of the reason they're doing it. I look awful. If I look like I've been through hell over the last couple of days, it's because I have been. Most notably, I've ruined my body. Like Jerry, I ruined my own career. Maybe it was the imposter syndrome. Maybe it's because I... It's been a, a method of, I, I think covert narcissism isn't the right phrase. Like, oh, look at how pathetic I am. You should feel sorry for me. You would never be mean to me because I'm so pathetic, right? Oh, I'm so fat. I'm so weird. I'm so good. Uh, a covert narcissist essentially worms their way into your heart. They do this with tales of misfortune and woe. <gasps> Goofy, I'm such an old man. I'm so... I'm such a... I grew up in an abusive family and an abusive home. The amount of pain that's in my head and my heart is... So vulnerable narcissism has a number of characteristics. Uh, a person can be considered a vulnerable narcissist without having them all. So with vulnerable narcissism or covert narcissism, we see pessimism. I feel defeated and confused and lost all the time, every day. Hypersensitivity to criticism. I can't handle this kind of hate. I can't handle these types of attacks. I can't do it. Reactive anger, so they're not really thinking things through. Is this what I have to do? <laughs> and so he goes by Boogie 2988, was booked into the jail this morning. Need for admiration. Can I get a round of applause? The self-centeredness. I'm the perfect victim. I have been victimized my entire life. The sense of entitlement. If you guys want to help me pay for my Tesla, please go ahead and dig deep. I sure would like a free fucking test. Leaving oneself to be special. How many kids went on to get 4.5 million YouTube subscribers? One. Steven uh, Williams! You're just watching the same things over and over again. What's up? Ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, Boogie Tiny Day for the Jaws and Power Hour of the Internet. This is my family series. My Jaws are streams. We're just talking about life, life, and the universe, and it's not particularly interesting to me. Boogie 2988. His fall from grace is so catastrophic. Not happy about it. People are sick of the shtick. Interesting. Okay, what do we think about that section? You guys are saying, oh, makes sense. It totally fits. 
I will say that's interesting. And it is sort of self-aware. And so again, he might just be suffering from narcissism and he might not be a one. He might be unable to be introspective enough, but is managing sort of. Like he did manage enough to get subscribers, guys. He did manage enough to find some success. Like plenty of narcissists are um, successful in life. So sometimes you suffer and you're unsuccessful. That is definitely true. So interesting. Interesting. And what would you recommend to him now uh, to get his viewers back? I don't think he's getting his viewers back. I don't think that's a possibility. I think the only thing to do now is go a different angle. What does that mean? This guy's the YouTube expert. I don't think that's true, though. I don't think Boogie, he wouldn't get his literal OG viewers back necessarily, but he could build a whole new audience. I mean, Keemstar's done it a hundred times. Like, people rebuild audiences. Some people stick around. You know what I mean? Well, he thinks he deserves everything but does not want to do anything. True. Mm, that's true. A lot of them are also unsuccessful also. Of course, of course, of course. A level 1.999999999. <laughs> Interesting. I'm glad Boogie brought it up first instead of having the doctor propose the idea. Yeah, well, I'm assuming Boogie probably comes from an abusive background with narcissists, maybe? But I don't even know if that's possible. I mean, it, I'm not going to say it's impossible, but... Uh, that's silly. Of course it's possible. There's, like, totally different bubbles on the whole internet. Boogie could do voiceovers. He could do totally different things. He could do... Like, you can always reinvent yourself on the internet. Literal rapists do it all the time. You think Boogie can't figure it out? Like, what do you mean? How do you change yourself? Like, viewers are smart. Like, they want to see you. They want to see what you're interested in. Um... Chris Brown beat up Rihanna and he still has a fan base. I think he'll be fine. I don't know. You got to get a job. Maybe in this case, GameStop. Oh, okay, hold on. Abby says it makes me wonder, though, how can how someone could behave and live their life in a characteristic of a one without being seen as a mental health issue because it's not a healthy way to live. That's a great question. Um, I think that's the dilemma, right? What happened in my life, at least, is, again, a one has to be someone with all the opportunities and accessibility and the awareness of what they should do, but they choose not to do it. And the problem is, is, like, maybe it's a mental illness, which Kyla brought up to me in my stream. She goes, well, what if it's just a mental illness? Okay, what is the mental illness? And if we don't know what it is, that means there's a category of people running around with a mental illness we don't know about yet. They should be studied. Like, that's what I'm saying. Are we saying there are people running around the planet? And if that's true, that's great. That probably is true, right? And that's the problem is like, I had to make up this levels system. I had to make up a one because I knew people, three people in particular, two of the most prominent people, I would say two people in particular, who like qualified for ones. And I was like, where do I put these people, right? Because they knew the answers. They would like look me in the eye and tell me what they should do and then not do it. And I'm like, uh, eat the cupcake, dude. And they're like, mm, no. And I'm like, but then they were examined and they were seen by doctors. And like, maybe the doctor didn't diagnose them correctly. Maybe the doctor should have diagnosed them with something and didn't. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's an illness. Maybe it's narcissism. Maybe it's a lot of things. But that's the dilemma is that narcissists can be successful. So you can't even like, Maybe it's the narcissism or maybe it's not. And that's the dilemma is why do certain illnesses hit certain people a certain way? And I think it's a lack of introspection, not the illness, but the illness can be the reason that it's hard to be introspective. Does that make sense? And so which one came first, the chicken or the egg is the question. Don. Don, I'm Boogie or Steve. Okay, uh, yeah. what do you prefer to be called? Honestly, by? probably Steve. Steve. Let's go with Steve. Okay, Steve. No problem. Whatever you prefer. And so you are here today because you are. <laughs> I love this, Britt. Some people ate the cupcake, then spit it out. So there's only uh, what was absorbed on the tongue for a moment. I feel like that's where he is. Okay, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. He had a taste of something better than spit it out, uh, spit it all out. That's good. I like that. Seeking employment yeah you're seeking out new work opportunities absolutely tell me a little bit about your background 
and where you think you want to go with the experience that you already have? Um, I did work at a small gaming store back in 2006, 2007. I that am was disabled. In high uh, recognized by the state of Arkansas, but also the United States government. There's that. Now, the, the downside to that is I am extremely depressed. So there's some mental health issues that we bring to the table. And then physically, I, I am morbidly obese. I have no references, uh, no work history, and no education. And when you Google my name, you might see rumors that I beat my ex-wife, and I am also a pedophile. Should mention. Is this a lack of introspection or is he sabotaging? Like, is this, is this a lack of introspection or extrospection? Is it a lack of awareness or is he sab sabotaging on purpose? Like, is this the plan? Is he like, I'm going to make sure I don't get a job today because he's doing a great job at that. I'm also a felon. Okay. Oh, and he's also a felon. Uh, What's the nature of your felony? Aggravated assault. How old is it? About two years. Okay. So I think there are some avenues you could explore. I definitely don't think it's... Oh, he yeah, says he reminds me of my brother and his dad, and neither of them are allowed in my house. So, and I'm like, you know what I'm saying? I don't know about you, but this is... Whew, this is this feels like mental health to a very specific degree if I'm being honest with you this doesn't feel as much like a one to me okay the ones I know know how to get jobs they know how to say exactly what they're supposed to say but then they can't like actually it's like they take the cupcake and they hold it but then they smash it to the ground so he is like literally trying to convince you not to give him the cupcake which makes me think like, okay, maybe this was even more than just introspection at this point. This is deliberate, which means he is being introspective enough or extrospective enough or thoughtful enough to sabotage. Oh, so maybe he's not a one. Maybe he's like a two. He's like a two B with mental health problems who's sabotaging or like a two, a two A even who's like sabotaging himself or to see he's like sabotaging himself on purpose. So he's thoughtful enough to literally do this in front of a camera because he does know better. I think this is too calculate. Like, you know what I mean? Hmm. It's impossible, but you have some challenges. Yeah. Lots of things in life are about your mindset and you're using weight and disability, I can't, I can't, I can't. If that is the attitude that you're gonna have when you approach everything, then you can't, and you yeah. won't. I did work in the porn industry for the better part of seven years, so uh, I mean. What? Be real with me. Do you, he worked in the porn industry for seven years? Do you really think it would be a good idea to go to a real interview and reference porn? It depended on the job, I would think. Like. See, that feels fake, it feels performative. I don't think he's being naive. I don't think um, he, mm, I don't think he's, I feel like it's deliberate. I think he's do in his head, he's like, I'm gonna say, yeah, he's trolling. It feels like he's trolling. Yes, Kay. It doesn't even feel like oversharing like people who accidentally vomit their life to you. It literally feels like he's trolling. He doesn't want to work. I agree. He's trolling the fuck out of this lady. A strip club maybe, but. Probably not in a more professional setting, I would say. So he is introspective and self-aware enough to troll. Isn't sabot... Yeah, it is... Sab I think it's trolling to sabotage on purpose. It's a plan. Yes, I would yeah. say that. Oh. Versus, I'll give you an example of the ones I know, the two I'm thinking of. They will get a job and they are like so lacking introspective. They're smart, but lacking introspection enough to like understand... Like there's something about them that like doesn't understand, but they understand. I don't know how to explain it. He is doing this. He's like being strategic. He thinks he's being funny. I swear to God. What would you think his chances are here of getting employment in the next? Could be narcissism. Still feels narcissistic. Could be. Could be. Three months. I'm not sure when it comes to the felony, we would have to see cor corporate approval for that sort of charge in order to proceed forward with a candidate. And they would ultimately be the ones to make the decision as to whether or not- Ooh, it's giving weaponized incompetence. Mm. We would feel comfortable presenting someone like that to our clients. <sighs> yeah. 
and violent felonies, violent crimes or sexual crimes. Um, have to be- hey, Mike. He was unable to gain corporate approval. Uh, listen, dude. I know we're making this documentary and everything, and I know you think I need to get a real job, but I just want to let you know I'm not going to. Yeah, okay, wait. Kay says they know the rules of the bubble enough to act accordingly, but doesn't understand the bubble enough to know why those rules are in place. It feels like he knows the rules and purposely is bending them so he doesn't have to get a job, so he can say, see, I can't get a job. See, I can't get a job. Could one ever consider that they may be one? Yes. Because I remember when I was around my one, and somebody was like, oh, Brittany, tell him about your levels. And I was like, Chuck. and I was describing the levels. And he's the only person that I've ever described the levels to who went off on me and was like, that's so fucked up. How could you say that about people? You're a one. You're a one. And I was like, yeah, the only people I know who get defensive over being ones are twos who are so insecure they think they're ones. Like literally, how could you be so insecure that you think you're literally what I'm describing as a one? Okay, like how much do you hate yourself or people that are ones who know that it describes them perfectly? Like the way I described it to him, he was just like instantly he knew. And to be fair, it was based off of him. Like he's the reason I had to create a level one because I was like, where do I put this person? Him and the other person I know, there was two people technically I needed to create the system for. I was like, what do I do with this, these people? Like they're la- they know they can explain to me. But then they're like, I'm not going to eat the cupcake. I was like, okay, but do you know you're going to starve if you don't eat the cupcake? They're like, yeah, for sure. But I'm not going to eat it. And I'm like, why? And they're like, "Mm, you just don't feel like doing it. And I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. There's no reason. Give a reason. Give a moral reason. Give like a fake reason. Give a reason. Like, and they're like, "Mm," and they know. I know they know. They know something. But it's like, they, I don't know what it is. Like, they think they know better or they think they're going to do better. They know the rules, but they can't exhibit it. Boogie here feels like he's trolling. He feels like he's trolling so he doesn't actually have to work and he can blame his dis- – it sounds like like a version of laziness that isn't um, – that is rooted in mental health. Like you know how conservatives will say, oh, these are people who are lazy. They're gaming the system. Sort of. I think he's creating an environment, Boogie, to make it so he doesn't have to work or he can put the blame like oh I can't work see it seems like he actually wants to be useless yeah which is not the same thing as like I don't think he's yeah maybe that's it maybe he wants to be hmm I think the ones don't understand so they won't comply which is why they refuse to the cupcake they think their plan makes more sense because they can't see the sense of the cupcake I agree with you like I agree with you I think the ones I know that I'm thinking of they think they're like they don't want to be useless. They actually think they're very useful, but they also are only useful to an extent. So they struggle differently. Boogie is very different. He feels more methodical and on purpose to take advantage in some way. I'm not going to walk into some job when I have 4 million subscribers on YouTube. I'm one of the original YouTubers. What I'm going to do instead is go back to making content, go back to telling stories and entertaining people and making money doing it. And you want to check back with me in a couple of months. Let's see how things are going. All right. Okay. So see how this feels so performatively interesting. Listen to this. I'm telling story to do instead. Some job. I need to get a real job, but Listen I just want to let you know I'm not going to. I- I'm not going to walk in. Some job. When I have 4 million subscribers on YouTube, I'm one of the original YouTubers. What I'm going to do instead is go back to making content, go back to telling stories and entertaining people and making money doing it. And you want to check back with me in a couple of months. Let's see how things are going. All right. I'll talk to you then. So that's the dilemma. It's like he should, what we want to see from Boogie is like, Guys, life is good. I've managed things. I'm so happy. I've, you know, I'm investing in myself. I'm living a humble life. Like, again, he does have 4 million subscribers. He should be successful. But also, he isn't because his negativity was too much for the audience. His negativity drove his audience away. 
why is he so negative? And a part of it was maybe his positivity was performative. Maybe the person we all fell in love with on YouTube was actually the performance. And when he made money, he felt comfortable to show his honest side, which is actually a lot more manipulative than we thought. Like what would make him do this documentary and sh say the things he's saying when he knows people are going to watch it? Is he also trolling us? So we watch more of his content because he's being like a, like a Trisha Paytas. See how Trisha knew though? Like Trisha was mentally ill, but also she knew it would work for clickbait. So she worked really hard to do clickbait. Trisha's lived so many lives. She's been in an Eminem music video, guys. Trisha's had so many lives and now Trisha's chilling. She's better. Her and Moses are having a great life. Like the baby's great. Everything's great. And I love that for Trisha. I'm so happy for her. But what made Trisha turn her life around for the positive and Boogie actually went negative? What was the difference there? And one was that Trisha always started off mentally unwell and Boogie was claiming to be nicer than I think he was. And I think it switched where Trisha is actually a really nice person and Boogie might not be one. What if like, because I think Trisha's great personally. I always felt like she just needed some help. But I think Trisha in her heart is like a good person. But I don't know if Boogie in his heart is the most well-intentioned to himself or the people around him. So maybe it's that. You guys still betting on narcissism? Maybe, yeah. Maybe it's the... It's like, yeah, it's the, it's the, I'm a YouTuber with 4 million subscribers. I'm amazing, but also please give me money because I'm poor and I keep spending it on Tesla and pussy. And I'm like, ew. Go lay down. Ew. Go lay down. Go lay down. Good job. Yeah, so, I mean, things aren't great. Um, people are still mad at me on YouTube. Net worth is 6,700, or no, sorry, net worth is negative 6,700 and subscribers are negative 50,000. Uh, my view numbers are pretty much close to zero. I'm having trouble breaking 10K on an upload right now. And uh, oh, not, not everything is bad. I've got at least one good thing going on. Can I show you? Love will find you when you least expect it, Taylor Swift. Uh oh. So this is uh this is. Um. <laughs> she, I'm gonna cry. She literally looks like she's twelve. Desi, or you can call her Des Desiree. Yep, Desiree. And we've been dating now for months. A couple months, yeah. Yeah. years apart <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> I just I don't know what it was it was I guess it's his energy is his curly hair his glasses I'm just, I must be into nerds it's I guess I don't know he's just adorable to me I like him he oh. was going through a lot and I randomly hit him up on Instagram and I told him that I, you know, I support him and that I'm always here for him and stuff. And so it, it started from there. On paper, it just doesn't really add up, right? It doesn't make sense on paper, but then practice and the reality, there was just something there. So it was pretty crazy, but I just felt it. I felt, I felt an energy connection to him before I even met him. And I don't know, that's just, that's just how it is. Boogie is 49, 48, 49. He's basically 50. He's 50. I'm going to say he's 50. He's 49 and she's 20. And then the longer we spent talking. Codependency? Absolutely. I don't know. Eventually you just realize we're the same person doing the same thing, living the same lives, just at different stages. And <laughs> I can see myself getting married to Boogie. I could definitely, I could definitely see us getting married. In fact, I... We may or may not have talked about it a little bit, and we may or may not sit around fantasizing about it and thinking about what it's going to look like and 
and I called you wifey the other day. Okay. And you loved it. You were so there for it. If I proposed right now on camera, what would you do? I'd say yes. That's a good sign. Boogie has improved my life tremendously. He <sighs> just makes me happy, the happiest I've ever been. And I'm not alone, and so that... Men in age gap relationships date women like this so they can feel like grown-ups because they can't actually date anybody their age because they can't actually be able to be there for them. And in this example, he's literally a 50-year-old dating a 20-year-old because this is the only way he's going to feel like a grown-up because a 20-year-old is the only thing that is less in control of their life than he is. He is literally dating this child so he can actually feel like an adult. This is... No bueno, canceled. No. No. Negatory. Canceled. He just completes me. He completes Growing me. up without a father figure has its challenges. Like you just don't have that, that, that support system that you would and the advice that you need. And so it's just difficult. Showing her literal baby photos. I don't ever want to be alone. That's another thing. I'm just, I just, maybe that's why I have stuffed animals. I just, I don't ever want to be alone. And so it's just nice to have company. And I help with the dogs. I get him, I get him his water. I, you know, like whatever he wants and requests, you know, I, I just mainly is to take care of him. He takes care of me, so. Codependency. Codependency. Say it with me, guys. Codependency. <laughs> Haliens, I see your comments. You said, am I muted to Brittany? No, girl, you're just getting naturally skipped somehow. But I see that comment. But if I scroll up, I haven't seen a comment from... Oh, no, there you are. Well, yucky. Did you specifically write me a message and I missed it? I'm not seeing any messages with your name on it specifically asking me anything in particular, question mark? Maybe I missed it, but I do see you asking Bryson to see if you're blocked, but I see you. Um, oof, you know, honestly, in relationships I've seen with this kind of age gap, I've seen the maturity level and the older person start to regress to match the energy of the younger one, for sure. For sure. Or they're already there, right? And that's the thing. You know, that's not what codependency is. Well. It's probably going to turn into that though, really. Like, so dependency, yes, but they could end up growing into what is like codependency, meaning like they feel like they have to, like he obviously has a dependency on women and partnerships. He obviously feels dependent on having a woman in his life to validate his existence. And then I think if he trauma bonds with someone or like has that codependency with somebody, like I know it's not literally what codependency is, but it's like, I feel like this is the starting point. I feel like he is the perfect makeup for it, right? But maybe not. Maybe it's just dependency, right? But it's obviously fulfilling some fantasy in his head, right? It's like f fulfilling some sense of something. Kay says, do you see the narcissism overlap with ones a lot? Or does the narcissism disqual disqualify them for the ones because it's technically a mental illness? Great question. Um, I think you, well, narcissism doesn't make you a one. There are a lot of successful narcissists. So you can't be a one because you're a narcissist, but you might have an overlap of narcissism and oneness maybe, but I don't know because narcissism is almost never diagnosed. So like the two people I'm thinking of had been to every doctor and neither of them ever got diagnosed with NPD, though both of them, family and friends were wondering if they had it, but every doctor they went to, none of them got diagnosed with NPD. So we ruled it out even though there's a feeling we might have that they both had it. They're, they both got ruled out for it because they saw all the doctors and none of the doctors diagnosed them with it. I mean, literally both families put a lot of investment in both these people, sought it out, looked for answers. They went to their appointments. They went to their therapy. They never got diagnosed. And so it was one of those things where we couldn't just keep diagnosing them past the doctors. So they seem to just have problems on another scale, but nothing diagnosable. And the things they were diagnosed with, well, plenty of people have it and deal with it every day and it's not a problem. So to the extent in which they experienced it. So I don't know if there's an overlap with NPD and narcissism. I mean, NPD and ones. 
But plenty of narcissists, NPD people have success in their life enough that I'm not, again, I can't think of ones as narcissists. You know what I'm saying? I just can't associate it with that because if there's a successful narcissist out there that rules it out, right? I'm not, for me, that rules it out. That's like saying uh, like every alcoholic would be a bad parent. It's like, well, they'd be a version of bad parent maybe, but not any worse than somebody without alcoholism who also doesn't show up for their kid, right? You don't have to be an alcoholic to be a bad parent. Right. So for me, I'm trying to be very careful that we don't just say like, oh, these pers- these people must have a disease versus like people are allowed to make decisions even with all the resources they have. Right. But it could be a lot of things. It could be NPD. People with NPD sometimes manipulate their doctors. Well, also doctors are too afraid to diagnose them with NPD because they won't handle the diagnosis, which we learned that doctors, therapists will often diagnose them as borderlines. Because the narcissist won't handle the narcissist diagnosis. So, you know. You know? Yeah, sometimes I, I pick weeds out here. So, because like, it makes it look better. I'm trying to trim down these vines, but I'm not doing a good job. I don't do this very much. Mm. You know, I used to have a theory, Mike, that if you are a 40-year-old man and you have a Snapchat, that means you're a creepy dude. Turns out my theory was right. I have a Snapchat and I am a creepy dude. See how he does this thing where he literally paints himself to be the worst thing ever. Oh, I say slurs. I'm a creepy dude. I use women as a meat market. Like he always paints himself in the worst light which could just be a self-loathing amplified by his his childhood trauma slash vulnerable narcissism or whatever. I found that person and they happen to be 20. And I get that it's creepy to date somebody half your age or younger, but people can call me creepy if they want. If she's happy, and I'm happy, then I will be the biggest creep you need me to be as long as her and I are happy. You can be as mad as you want. See, I feel like that's supposed to sound powerful, but it doesn't. Do ones tend to have an enabler? I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, I think ones tend to find somebody to take care of them because they tend not to take care of themselves or they end up homeless or from home to home or something. I'm not sure though, because I haven't met all the ones in the world. I've only met the few that I know of that I can't qualify as twos. And again, I meet homeless people all the time. I meet mentally ill people all the time. I meet people who are struggling all the time. They're nothing like the people I'm talking about. I've met narcissists who are diagnosed or I've known of them. They're nothing like these people. They're very specific. And so again, for me, because I'm so big on categorization, I just... I feel like it's a very specific kind of person, a very specific kind of person, but I'm not sure if you mean enabler in a particular way, because lots of people have enablers, but I'm not sure if that's meant in a specific way. How do you deal with the one in your life? My brother is a one and I sadly, um, I can't see your comment because the emoji's in the way. Halion says, it feels like he's saying, look at me, look at me and doing naughty things like a kid who never got enough attention. Yeah, I could see that actually. I could see that being the case. How do you deal with a one? My brother is one and I sadly live with him. This boogie guy is so hard to deal with. Honestly, um, yeah, I would take space. I think ones are really difficult to be around. Do you know what I mean? They're very difficult. Please give examples of a one. Um, I mean, it's hard to, in a way. (sighs) Imagine a one makes a decision that is so unreasonable, like not eating the cupcake when you're starving in a desert, right? That it can't be fit into a category. A narcissist wants to eat. 
A narcissist wants to eat the cupcake. A narcissist would eat the cupcake. They would eat the cupcake and then tell you you're a piece of shit for not giving them more of a cupcake. <laughs> like a narcissist would eat the cupcake. Why wouldn't a narcissist eat the cupcake? Right? It's very difficult to, we've tried this before, Brittany. I know, I think it's really difficult because it's such an anomaly to my brain, right? Why do you think ones don't take the cupcake? I think it's a lack of introspection, like a lack of, of giving themselves time to, to like think about or like do, they're not dumb. It's not like they don't have the information. Well, maybe why do they do it? Netflix. Oh yeah. Netflix from Joe. Joe is, Joe is a one for sure. Like Joe from Netflix, you Joe is definitely a one. Like he's a one, right? Um, uh, Jerry from Rick and Morty, he's a one right? So there is like a oneness to them where it's like, there maybe they have no sense of, like maybe they're so without values. Isn't Joe a sociopath? Like antisocial personality disorder? So not all sociopaths do what Joe does though. Again, you can be a sociopath. You can be a narcissist and be a one, but it's not the reason you're a one. Do you guys get what I'm saying? You can be traumatized, but it's not the reason you are a one. Plenty of people are sociopaths and don't become Joe. Plenty of people are so many things and don't become. Do you get what I'm saying? They still are able to have a level of introspection, even if it's just to get by. Oh, the father from Shameless is a one. Exactly. I don't know the Simpsons enough to know if he's a one. If Homer Simpson is a one, I doubt it. I think he's like a 2C, but I don't know. I have never watched the show. I don't know. I don't know. But why would Joe be a one? Doesn't he have trauma that made him who he is now? Um, that's the problem, right? Joe doesn't display in the show the kind of trauma that would lead to this particular outburst. So it's not the same, right? I don't think his trauma explains his behavior because he's not even good at his own behavior. You know what I mean? I don't think his, tra again, you can say, oh, this is just my trauma and this is why I do it. But that doesn't mean that's the case. A lot of people think, oh, trauma is the reason I do this. That's not necessarily true. And so what I want to be careful of is assuming that trauma makes you do things because people are going to start associating trauma with doing things. And that's unfair to people who have trauma because not all of us do the thing just because we have trauma. We have enough introspection and self-respect not to do X things just because we were traumatized. But some people do things because they're traumatized, but it's not the same. It's very, it's very nuanced, right? Sexually. We both seem to be having an excellent time. Why does he brag like this? Why does he say things out loud? Nobody cares how your sex life is going, Boogie. I would say that it's the best I ever had. What? You are so... Ooh, this feels, uh, is this a lot on YouTube? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro really thinks he's mic dropping every time. I know. Oof. Tickets were $50 and drinks were $27. I look like a, a samurai on vacation. <laughs> I was going to ask if you could see it, but... <laughs> so here, and I think, did you, uh, what are you, a YouTuber or something? Yeah, yeah, I've been uh, on YouTube for about 17 years. You've been on YouTube for 17 years? Yeah, four million subscribers. Okay, and this is your, right, your girlfriend. See how he brags? See how he brags? No shot. ABBA would ever be like, yeah, 2 million subscribers. No shot. I'm just using ABBA as the example because we know him and he's a friend. And so it shows like the human, ABBA is so hu humble. It shows the difference. If ABBA was in that crowd, the guy was like, so what are you, like a YouTuber? ABBA would be like, oh yeah, I do okay. ABBA would say something, like he would have humility. He wouldn't be like, <laughs> 2 million subscribers. <laughs> like there's no fucking way he would do that. He'd just be like, oh yeah, I'm a, I'm a YouTuber. And then they'd be, you know what I'm saying? Like he would... There's a, like a, there's a lack of humility with him that makes him so annoying. You know what I mean? 
Do ones often tend to be criminal uh, reoffenders? Not to my knowledge. No, the ones I know are not criminals at all. Um, they come from middle class living. They've had access to education. They um, they have no association with like prison or jail or crimes any more than the average person, like speeding or doing weed. Um, so do ones often tend to be criminal reoffenders? I don't even know if they tend to be criminals. I have no I have no reason to believe ones would be criminals. There, I have no data for that. Who is much younger than you is suspiciously. <laughs> She, oh my god, she looks so young. Okay, do you guys do you guys agree with this? I feel like couples should match. I feel like even if there is an age gap, the vibe should be a match. When couples don't match like this, it makes me feel so uncomfortable where I'm like, mm, there's not like a match here. And I'm not saying they should be the same. Like I think some couples can have an age gap, but they match. They look like they should be together versus like Boogie and his girlfriend. It feels weird. You know? Sometimes the way you describe ones makes me think I might be one. Maybe. That's kind of crazy. I think most ones know they're ones but aren't going to say it out loud. And they would never like be worried they were ones. They would get defensive that they were maybe ones. And I feel like you saying sometimes when you describe ones, it makes me think I might be one with the cry emoji. You're probably not a one girl, right? Like I think you're disqualifying yourself as a one by being sad that you might be a one. <laughs> like I think you're okay. You know what I mean? Can we get the subtitles back sooner or later? Guys, I have no idea why there's no subtitles. Like you're asking me to do something that I have no understanding of why it's happening. I haven't changed any of my settings. If YouTube isn't giving you subtitles, it's YouTube's computer or program. I have not changed any of my settings. I don't even know how to do that. Yeah. So, okay. But guys, if you're worried you're ones, you're probably not ones. That's what I'm saying. Habibis, please have some, some, some have confidence in yourselves. You're sitting here and having an introspective conversation. You know what I mean? And we're doing these things. We're chilling. Let's see, Bernie, is your stream on low latency mode? It's on the same mode it's always been on, but let's see what I have it on. I have it on. Normal latency. I have it on normal. It's the same it's always been on. You can see it from the dashboard. Yeah, it says it's normal latency. Stream strength is excellent. Thank you. Does that matter? Yeah, if you're worried you're a one, you're not. But if you're defensive, because I created a system, you're like, that's so fucked up for you to say people are ones. You're either a one or a two who's afraid they're a one, so you get defensive. You're probably not ones, guys. Literally, listen to me. You're probably not ones. <laughs> You would be so rare and then you would like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Having some bad moments does not mean you're a bad person. Exactly. Moments like you're good. Trust me. You wouldn't be, you probably wouldn't be in this audience having this conversation if you were once. To be real. Okay. She, that, you know, it's never good when you say, well, she's an adult. <laughs> is, he, is this a sex trafficking situation? <laughs> Ooh, look at that image. Why why do older people ugh, why do older people do this to young people? I feel like they're doing it to young people. Why do they do it to young people? And I hate it when people single us out. I hate it when people like We're gonna do that though, it's to be expected. You're right, we're different. But fuck them, right? Yeah, fuck. Fuck. He's not manipulating me. I love him for him. He doesn't control me. We're a team. Definitely. I don't think he's manipulating her. I don't think he's targeting her. I don't think he's being a predator. I think it's worse that he's not being honest with himself so he can't be honest with her. He supports me in everything I do and everything I want. He's, he's my support system. Let me get a McCrispy Deluxe combo. Make it large. You know, it's hard to judge him for his eating habits because he's so large, he will need more food. But it would be more cost effective to eat at home, especially as a content creator who has all the time in the world to eat at home. He really will save a lot more money. 
What do I think about his dire financial situation? I think it's scary. Yeah, what's so scary about um, it? That he might lose it all in a day. He might just be homeless one day, but. So if I'm broke, if I go broke, okay, if we end up back on disability and it's me, you, and Chad living in some small apartment and we're eating McDonald's every day and that's treating ourselves. You're going to be able to handle that? Yeah, you I guess it's in that? me, you, Chad, eating McDonald's every day in our small, cute apartment. Because, I mean, I'm hopeful that people will go back to watching us on YouTube. I hope that people will be, I'm hopeful that people will, like, you know, I can go back to live streaming full time again and do, like, six hour live streams like every other streamer and, like, grind it out. But, I mean, there is a very real possibility that one day I won't be able to do that anymore. Wait. Why doesn't he do that now? You know it's for free. You know he could stream for free as many hours a day as you want. Wait, why can't he stream? What is the reason he can't stream like I'm doing right now? Should I ask Boogie to come to on my channel? Whatever we can. Are you prepared for that? As long as I have you, that's all I need. Ooh. Mmm. Have you ever thought about the fact that she's just waiting you out and trying to take your 401k when you die? I'm out. I, I, I'm broke. You're broke. I'm broke. Yeah. Four million subscribers. Even See, if that's what he gets for bragging. Because he bragged about how many subscribers he had, they also assumed he made money. Which, to be fair, he should be eating or should be making money. Does go broke and has to sell the house. I'm still gonna be by his side. <sighs> He's the only one that I love and I care about, and there's only one of them. And so I'm not just gonna up and leave him for money because money's an issue. Because I love him and just imagining a life without him is difficult. <laughs> oh, girl. I mean, my biggest fear is dying on her. If I die in the next two or three years on her, that's just gonna ruin her life. Okay, relax, buddy. It's not going to ruin her life. And if it does ruin her life, something is wrong. She's only known you for three months, right? Hasn't she only been dating him three months? I mean, don't get me wrong. Did I primarily, like, did I go through a courting system and within three months was I absolutely in love? Absolutely. But no offense to my husband, who I love with all my soul. I am a fighter. I am a survivor. And people die. And if you think it's going to shatter my whole life because someone died on me, girl, you have not met all the people that have died on me in my life, girl. You think one more person's like, okay, no. Okay? Life happens. People die. From kids to old people. People die. That is life. The idea that you're putting anyone in a situation that if you die, their life is shattered. No. Your responsibility is making it so they won't be shattered when you die. Okay? Absolutely not. My husband and I are not about to make each other crippled by our deaths. I could die tomorrow. He could die tomorrow. And not because he's fat or has diabetes or whatever Boogie claims his issues are. You could die because you got hit by a car. So what is this? I could die in the next two to three years. You don't know when you're going to die. You could die tomorrow. It is your job to make. See, I think the best kind of team is a team where everyone's independently choosing to be together. Okay. So what is this? Like, it's going to ruin her life if I die. Sir, what sob story are you telling yourself? Yes, I'm sorry. Is this now codependency? Codependency. Is this not it yet? Probably not. I'm not a therapist. I really want you to understand how actually sick I am. Like, I don't know if you actually get it, but this is my health summary. This is everything that's currently wrong with me. I mean, Habibi, no offense. We could just look at you. We know you're unhealthy. No offense. Like, okay. Like, I'm not going to play some game right now with these bubbles. Like, we know. But also, like, plenty, like, okay. So, like, what, 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 uh, like, what is he doing? What is the, what is this? My risk for stroke or heart attack is astronomical. I am essentially a walking time bomb. And I'm so fucking sorry for that. I really, really wish I had taken better care of my body. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'll never be ready for it, but I know. 
I don't want you to be alone. I don't want you to be alone. Okay. See how she said earlier, like, I just never want to be alone again. And now, do you know what I mean? This just feels so unhealthy. I've talked to my therapist since me and her have been together about overcoming it. My therapist keeps telling me the same thing. When you learn to love yourself, all these things will fall into place. And we just got to teach you those skills. And then I turn to my doctor. Yeah. Oh, I agree, Magic. I think he enjoys making her feel worried and bad for him, which is fucked up. I agree. That's why I don't care. He feels like he's trying to make us feel bad and her. I. That's exactly why I don't like it. It makes it feel like he's trying to make us feel really bad. And I'm like, why are you doing that? It feels icky. And I'm like, what do we do? He's like, you've had bypass surgery. You, you lost 200 pounds. What more can I do for you? I'm like, fix it, dude. Help fix it. And then they're telling me that I'm the one that has to fix it. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. And I'm making less and less every month. And I'm scared shitless. Oh, my God. Yeah, Mariah, it feels like he feeds off the emotional impact he has on her. I think that's what he feeds off with the audience as well. Like right now, oh, my gosh, I'm making less money this month. I only made 3200 Yeah, welcome to being like an average American, my bro. Welcome back to the club. <laughs> like, what? But also, like, that's a there, there's no way that's not a choice. Like, YouTubers way smaller than him are making that much on AdSense every month. How is he not pulling? I don't know. Did we get proof of his income? Did we get proof of his AdSense revenue? And now. Making his way to the ring, Boogie Tonight! Hey, so Mike, I just got off the phone with Keemstar, and he has a boxing event coming up, and he's giving me a slot on the card. We got it! This is 800 pounds in one ring. This fight pays $10,000. Oh. No chance against me. Shut the fuck up. I never saw this. Like, I have... I have no reference to this from the internet. I completely missed this part. When did this happen? I am, I am, I have no idea. I had no idea this happened. The people are going to see me win this thing. This is where I turn it all around. Right here. Four hundred thousand viewers purchased this fight. Stops the contest and therefore your winner wins. Wait, what happened? I'm gonna watch the way he hits my head. My brain got shocked with each one of them. It's, it's ricocheting against my skull. He was still paid ten thousand. Wait, did he? Winner, Freak Shane Miston stops the contest, and therefore your winner, Referee Shane Miston stops the contest. What? I can't hear what he's saying. Hold on. Referee? Hold on. All around. Right here. Referee STS stops the contest? Therefore, your winner is not Boogie. Okay. Huh. My brain got shot. Jesus. Each one of them is it's ricocheting against my skull. At least he made 10K. So since you guys were here last, I did. Okay, root referee Seamus stops the contest. Okay, thank you. Have a bit of a windfall, which bought me some time here in this house. Uh, the problem with that is I spent more than 10,000 getting that fight together. So by the time all that was done, all I did was put that 10,000. So wait, they didn't, they didn't pay for the fight? Like he got paid for the fight, but they didn't supply anything like his flight or his hotels or anything? Physical therapy? I'm kind of surprised. Dollars back into savings. Being in the new relationship is great, but I mean, she can't help pay a $2,200 mortgage. Okay, let's go through my monthly bills for a second. 
my health insurance is 800. I have $500 worth of medical bills. I have $500 worth of utilities. I, I pay for doctor's visits, physical therapies, labs constantly. I still have to pay for the car that I drive. I still have to pay oh, for the car insurance. Oh, his car payment's only $210 a month? I thought I heard on another video that it was much more. Didn't Boogie say it was like near his mortgage? For health insurance, Diablo 4 came out. I had to buy it. Uh, he had to buy Diablo. He had to buy it. We put Dia 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 Diablo. Is it Di Diablo? I don't know. We we put video games in a video game budget. Like we're just like, do we? Because like video, you know, but like you just put it in the budget, sir. Make a budget. Make a budget. Final Fantasy 16 came out. I had to buy it. Tears of the Kingdom came out. I had to buy it. That's $400 worth of video games right there. But if you take out all of it. Dates are $750. Eat rice and beans at home. You take it out. All I eat is sandwiches every day. All I do is sit here. I don't pay for any Netflix subscriptions. All I pay for is internet, utilities, medical bills, mortgage. If I pay for just that, I need $7,000 a month. Yeah. Uh, uh. So my goal is to have all of my expenses in a 3K budget because I figure like 3K is within reason. You know what I mean? So I feel like the average person lives off 3K. I try to live off 3K. I think that's like within reason. You know what I mean? That way, if like money ever disappeared, like 3K is like within, like you can always make 3K working full time, even minimum wage, like doing like two jobs, you can always make 3K. That's kind of like my thinking. What is now his mortgage is what's expensive, $2,200 a month. Why doesn't he, you know, if he cleaned his house, he could have a renter. That's what he should have done. He should have cleaned his house and made part of the house a renter and gotten a roommate. Or he could sell the house and downsize to a townhome. But sometimes I think people who make money, who came from poor backgrounds, don't want to downgrade because then it feels like we failed. But I think like that's what you get for not spending your money reasonably, right? You weren't wise. He didn't invest his money. He invested it in crypto, which he lost on. That was his fault. He put every penny in crypto. You know what I mean? So to have a 7K budget makes sense because of, I think, his mortgage, but also not really because look, wait, let's go back to that screen. Hold on. Okay. Health insurance, $800. Fine. Okay. My health insurance in Arizona, if I had it, would have been $800 too. So fine. Medical bills, fine. Utilities, $500. I believe it. Doctor's visits, $750. I want to see proof of these receipts. Physical therapy, $950. That's kind of crazy, but okay. Labs, $320. Car payment, $210. Insurance 95. That's really cheap insurance. Even when I was paying AAA insurance, it was 180 for both my trailer and my car. Diablo, fine. Final Fantasy 90. Tears of Kingdom 70. Mortgage $2,000. Groceries 800. Internet 250. And dates 750. Why are dates? Okay, so dates, let's say dates. Okay, $750 a month. Why are dates very expensive? It's so funny. My brother asked me the other day, he goes, Don't you eat out all the time with your partner? And I was like, Oh, no, because we're like on this budget right now where we're saving for certain things. So we stopped eating out even for our date nights. Like we've been just kind of walking or spending time together because, yes, we could go out, but we want to go out to certain places that are kind of expensive. So we're just kind of saving it and we're not prioritizing it because like I kind of rather would buy like something else. And so we're like, eh, we could eat out or we could just like make food at home because like so we play the what do we want more game. And that's how we've managed to make like our budget work. It sounds like he doesn't do that. He just says, I want it. I got it. I want it. I got it. And I'm like, how about this? What do you want more? Do you want the video game or do you want to go out to dinner? You can't have both, right? You got to have either. Do you want a dinner or video game, right? Like have a budget. Again, I want to be a rich, like Graham Stephan, like make your own coffee at home if you can. You know what I mean? Because like, why are we splurging? Like, Again, you can do what you want to do, but it sounds like he's not having a healthy relationship with money, which is pretty common. And it sounds like he never had one. He probably always thought he'd be making $400,000 a year. He probably never thought his revenue would get down this low. And that was the mistake. You know what I mean? He needs to learn to play a which do we want more game and really be honest with himself because like you probably don't need it. You know what I mean? Even date nights for me, like, why do you even have, like, I don't need a formal date night. I just need to spend time with my partner. So, like, going on a walk feels really great to me. Even if we daily go for a walk, going on one that feels like, oh, we'll walk to, like, farther or we'll go to, like, uh, yeah, go bowling, bro. Go bowling. 
that's a great date night. Like, do something. I don't know. I'm well, my partner and I are homebody, so to be fair. But so is he. He says he is. So why are you going out all the time? See something there. To, and his partner. When I say I'm on a team with my partner, that means like we're not spending this money. It feels like his partner and him aren't sitting down and saying like we're not going to do this. So seventy five seven thousand seven hundred fifty dollars on dates sounds like they're not on a good team together. A good team would bring that down to 150, 200, or bring it down to like basically zero. So, uh, you know what I mean? Starts with the video games right there. But if you take out <sighs> all of it, if you take it out, all I eat is sandwiches every day. All I do is sit here. I don't pay for any Netflix subscriptions. All I pay for is internet. We'll switch out the dates for Netflix. And there, Netflix is $25 a month. And now you're not paying $750 on dates. Just pay for Netflix and have dates at home. Net, utilities, medical bills, mortgage. If I pay for just that, I need $7,000 a month. I'm not making $7,000 a month. Which is rip, because like he should be banking that much on AdSense alone. And I have no clue how to do it. See, that is so strange. How did this guy build his channel up to 4 million subscribers and he doesn't know how to, you know, what happened? So that's what leads me to think like there was trauma or something because he had built it up. He did find success. Why is he losing the success? Why is he losing it? You know what I mean? Wonder how much money he could save on electricity if he turned off all his arcade machines. <laughs> True. But also in Arizona, my electricity was like $400 a month. It was awful. And we were just like, we kept the house on a basic like temperature. It was so difficult. But something about his finances doesn't make sense to me. But, you know, I could be wrong. Like, it just doesn't sound that right. You know what I mean? Uh, like, and he works from home, right? So it's like, ugh. Help me with budgeting, Brittany. I will help you guys with budgeting in two years when I figure it out for myself. I am still learning how to budget. But we, again, what has helped me is play the, do I need it? Do I want a game? And if I need it, do I, what does that mean need? Like, you know what I mean? So I don't know. I just play a game with myself that says, what do I want more? And I say, I want that. So I'd rather save up for that. Like I really want shoes. So I'm going to save up for that rather than eat out at a restaurant where I can make that food at home. You know what I mean? So yeah, it feels like he's lying. I want to see some receipts. How is he not making that much? Guys, yeah, his, his ad revenue should be so much more. There's no way. Whoa, what just happened? Did I just like skip out of the video? Whoa, how did I do that? What the effers, bro? I'm pissed. Dollars a month. Okay. I'm not making $7,000 a month and I have no clue how to do it. So there's something I've always wanted to try. There's a lot of research that came out of Europe and now we're doing it here in the United States where psychedelics can help reset certain brains. People who experience childhood abuse, people who've gone through trauma, people who deal with post-traumatic stress disorder, and I'm all of those. I, to be honest, I'm scared shitless. Who is paying for these psychedelics? It's like, yes. But there's no way, like what? It feels like he's always just Band-Aid, Band-Aid, Band-Aid. Like, don't get me wrong, I love drugs. And I do think they can help you. But not if you're this closed off. He's too closed off. Hey, it says 50, 30, 20 budget help, 50% of income for needs, 30% for wants, and 20% for savings and debts. Ooh, that's good. That's good. But like, seriously, why are we going to drugs? It's one of the only things I haven't tried yet. <sighs> So let's give it a shot. It's the only thing I haven't tried yet. Oh my God. What? My given name is Ryan Arthur DeLeo, and I've adopted the name Flaming Star. There's one thing that's undeniable.
undeniable is that there's always this question about why, why am I here? Existence, what's really happening? Who am I? That's what happens when you seek out Lucid. I love, yeah, yeah, Kay. I love white men shamans with Southern accents. <laughs> I love him. I lo and it's it's going to allow everything else physically here to relax. The emotional stuff is going to come out. Trauma is going to come out. But afterwards, your atoms are going to go back into their original positions. That's why. He'll be mind, body, and spirit all one together. We're all connected. Oh, Lord. Oh, when you get to a certain point of understanding inside your intellect mind, that connectivity, you realize your hands are basically looking like USB ports. So these are the, uh, it's crazy to think that something that just grows out of the ground has so much power and I'm actually holding it Yo, in my hand. I really do like shrooms for the record, like. <laughs> right now, but here we go. They don't taste bad. Oh shit. Honestly, that doesn't taste too bad. They're pretty good and dry. Every, everybody oh, that says kind of earthy. Stim and all. Oh, the whole thing, yeah, yeah. Okay. Welcome to the club. Oh, damn. I mean. May God bless you and be with you on your oh, journey. Oh, some sage, okay. Or no, is that wood? Just word burning wood? Oh. Okay, so I think we've been about 20 minutes in. About 15, yeah. About 15. So we're about 15 minutes in and I started to feel things are kind of wavy and kind of disconnected. It's kind of like my brain works on multiple channels and like I have to pick and choose what I'm concentrating on. I have never been involved. I have no clue where the fuck I am or even who I am. And I don't give a fuck. I recognize Oh, uh, He's about to experience the second part of the realization of letting go. And we're gonna to get to the other side of it. I told you they'd come. It's gonna get nice and bright in about five more minutes. Yeah. And the reflection in the water is really cool too. So what do you think was the first trauma that you experienced with you had? Ooh, trauma talk with a shaman? Um, I just feel like you don't have to talk because the shrooms talk to you. Are we being trolled by this whole documentary <laughs> Discord? <laughs> Are we being trolled? Listen, I love shrooms. I did an amazing shroom trip before I came to Europe. And it was like a really good, really grounding trip. It really just, I was so grateful to come back to sobriety and just like be sober again because it was a lot. And I'm a lightweight, so it didn't even take that much. I took less than three grams and I was like, holy shit. Like my whole life was like, whoop. So I get it. And shrooms, one gram or like one shroom, which is about a gram. Well, it depends on like how you measure it. Is it a gram? What is it, guys? When I take one mushroom, well, it depends on how big the mushroom is. I can get like I love microdosing on shrooms. I like little shrooms. You know what I'm saying? But it can be really great or like really scary and life changing. And but like also what does life changing mean? It only means life changing if you're having the introspective conversation with yourself. And what is life changing if you go back right to your bad habits? So, you know, when people are like, I had a life-changing shroom trip, but then they're still back to their old habits. I'm like, well, could have been that life-changing. Which basically set up like a defense mechanism for you. Man. The editing is really good. This is Mike Clem's channel. I'll, um, I'll put it in the chat again so you guys can go like his channel and like the video. Yeah, my parents are just crazy. They're broken people. Parents? Yeah. Stewards, people who are like trying to, 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 oh, okay, okay. Yep, that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? What? Like they don't, I mean, that shit doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. That was the dumbest shit. Oh, it didn't happen so long ago. Like, I've just been waiting for the right time to just drop that shit. 
So, uh, when did you feel the need of this separate personality? Is that what, was that like what you used as a coping mechanism to socialize with? Ooh, uh, leading questions, leading questions. Honor, that's a leading question. Case is a good shaman can guide you towards the right experiences based on your intentions. The questions can help for sure. For sure. I just feel like that particular question was very leading. That's exactly what it is, right? Like, I didn't know what the hell, I don't know how to communicate what I was dealing with or what I was going through. And I just, right. We put on these different faces in order to deal with situations in society. You try to give people what the hell they want. And then you felt like that was the need to make up Francis or other personalities. Yeah. See, this isn't like, no, this is not, he's not really like, no. Are you ready? That's my very introspective commentary. <laughs> All that go? Yeah, please, man. Oh my God. This is the first time I've ever felt happiness. I wait, 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 what? Happiness. <laughs> this is the first. I doubt that, right? First time I felt it. Who wants to tell him, man? It's all kind of bullshit. It's, what's all, bullshit? it's all bullshit. What's, what's bullshit? Just all the things I've been worried about. <laughs> you all yeah, Kay, I agree. They need somebody who doesn't even know who Boogie is. Yeah, like someone totally impartial and neutral, like somebody who doesn't give a fuck about who you are as a YouTuber, because none of that shit matters. When you go down an introspective journey, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you, like who, what you do. Like you're really understanding the consciousness as, you're understanding it in such an intimate way. Like it shouldn't matter all of these things. That's why I do like it. Like depending on why a caller is calling me, it's best to call me and tell me right away that like, hey, I want to talk about philosophy and stuff and I don't want to do anything else because then we can keep it like, even when people reach out to me and they're like, hey, can you talk to me about stuff? I was like, we should do it as a professional, like a professional relationship. So there's like a boundary because that changes the tone. When you sound, when it's your friend, it's not the same. When it's like your sister, it's not the same. When it's a professional, someone like who's not, it's totally different. The, aunt, the questions are different. This guy knows too much about Boogie. He knows who Francis is. Like he should just be, he should just be asking questions about in general, not like specific. Yeah. Master of your own orchestra. Man. It's a game. <laughs> can't even stop this. Wait, he can't even stop the self pity while on shrooms. If that's not a one, I know it's like, bro. Right. Go, so it's up man. to you to choose. <laughs> the next day. Steven, are you, can you get up? Hello? Who's, whose voice was that? Oh, that was the documentary guy. What is the documentary guy? Just watch him sleep all the morning. I'm still not sure I'm like really here yet. I don't really want breakfast. That's just, that's a change. Jesus. Whew. Come on, guys. Let's go. It's just all bullshit. Like, none of this matters. None of it. It's all a construct. It's all a simulation. It's all a... It's a fucking video game. You know when you die? I think I died last night. I physically, my body was fine, but I think I went back into the void we come from. And I think, uh, I think I'm still in it, except I'm also in this physical corporal body, but I'm also the incorporeal being that puppets it and controls it and God damn it, I feel like I'm in control. I, got, I feel like I'm in control of myself for the first fucking time. The stuff that I, I normally worry about, like worrying about my finances, worrying about my internet, worrying about what people think about me, it's all so incredibly stupid. It's all just bullshit. <laughs> 
I think I'm gonna enjoy making YouTube videos again. I think I'm gonna enjoy live streaming again. What's up, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube? I'm gonna get you 98 coming at your live is good to the power. When I make a video, 10,000, 15,000, 20,000 people watch. That is still my dream job. Everybody falls off. That's part of the deal. Every single month. He had tons and tons he, of You start off as a nobody, and for a short period of time, you're a somebody, and then that star burns out like every star does. I was lucky enough to get hit by lightning. I was lucky enough to get to live my dream. I was lucky enough to get to enjoy all of that, play this game the way I wanted to play it. I'll be gone one day too. But for one brief moment, we, we got an opportunity to shine really bright. things I've ever seen. Like, so I remember nice being Boogie 2988 coming at you live once again through the power of the internet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jordan, that's amazing, dude. You genuinely believe that I can make a comeback. I did when I showed up, <laughs> but I'm slowly realizing. Boogie was not compensated for this per for his participation in the film. Dad, uh, you're absolutely fucked. Okay. All right, so. <laughs> so, 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 so He got pretty mad because he can't find his Mountain Dew. And I gotta be honest, the funniest part is he, he tried to find the Mountain Dew in the microwave. Oh my god. Okay, interesting. Okay, a couple of things. So, look, shrooms are great. I really recommend them. Especially microdosing. You feel great on them? There's always, like, many, 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 many ego deaths a person can have. There's also a spectrum of feeling good off the placebo effect of shrooms. And so... The dilemma is his experience is probably valid because he probably had a really good experience. He saw it, like he seemed to see it on his face, but it's probably not going to change his life, right? Because I think, you know, in life you have many, many, many ego deaths. And you have many, many opportunities to like shift yourself and do these things and like <gasps> realize things about yourself. So he's just kind of at the beginning stages of it. He touched it, but let's just do some research and see if there's a change. Okay. Easy peasy, right? We'll just go right to the source. Go to his channel. Okay. So, okay. It's over. I'm done with the drama. Okay. What's up? Ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, Boogie2988 coming at your levels again through the power of the internet. This was a day ago. Bye now. You've probably seen that documentary. And if you haven't, uh, I will link it down below. Go give it a watch. Now, if you've watched this thing, I bet you have a lot of criticisms towards me. And that's okay. The documentary just came out, like literally just yeah, came out. Comments are open. Say what you got to say. It was a hard watch. Um, this was my second time watching it and admitting to a lot of the things in that, whether it was the way I wasted my money. Yes. So if, I mean, the realization hits, but it takes discipline to stay on the path. Yep. Um, the stupid things I've done to my body or my life. Uh, admitting to being a covert narcissist, but I'm glad that I use. Oh, who? Okay. Interesting. I really enjoyed that documentary too. That was really well done. Is this platform that Mike gave me to talk about this stuff and get it out of the way because I don't want to talk about it on this channel ever again. Man, I just want to be an entertainer. I mean, I just don't want to share the personal aspects of my life anymore if I can help it. Uh, it certainly was not a good business plan. I don't recommend it. And the doc definitely points that out, as it should. Mm. Watching the chat on this thing was like watching a who's who of, like, nutters that have been attracted to me for years, calling me things like a pedophile and a groomer, spamming my home address, uh, hoping that people show up to my home. home. I, it, I, it, it, it's hard to talk about because just how fucking crazy some mm. of these people are. That's what you get when you share your private and personal life. Okay. We like, yeah, we like a self. Okay. That was like. He's being 
very pointed, very self-aware. I've watched my videos for a long time. Maybe a lot of the stuff isn't news to you, especially for the people who are like obsessed with the negativity that surrounds me. But for your average person, a lot of the stuff is going to be like brand new stuff. And I, I'm curious to see what you think. A lot of people have asked about stuff that was not in the final cut of the documentary. The good news is I have plenty of clips to show you moving forward. I think I have like a stack of 20 different clips uh, that are long enough for a YouTube video that I think you'll enjoy hmm. covering some of the stuff that wasn't in the full doc. So that's okay. me. Okay. Warts and all. That's my life. That's my situation. And I don't want to talk about it ever again. Let's see if we can make some videos that are more interesting than that moving forward. As always, hmm. thanks for watching. I love you very much. And I will speak with you again soon. Okay. Mm. Okay, we love a good epic comeback. Okay. Uh, one day ago. All of it is about the documentary. Ooh. Today, I think we've reached the end of the Jax Films versus Sniper Wolf saga, at least as far as YouTube is concerned. They've taken some action, and I want to talk about their action as well as their statement. I got a lot to say. Now, very brief summary for those of you who don't know, Sniper Wolf is a content creator, one of the you know, favored people here on YouTube. She makes he most- He got 17 million, or 17 million. He got 17,000 views. Um, You know what I mean? Yeah, wait, girl, don't fall for this. He does it every month. No, no, no. That is true about Boogie. That's, okay, hear me out. Stay with me here. He knows what to do. It's a cycle. He does this every time and he comes back. It could be narcissism, though he says it out loud, which makes me think like, well, that's interesting. Why is he saying it out loud? Is he actually not a covert narcissist and he's actually using that because it sounds good? And it's what people want to hear. Is he actually, or is he lacking? Like he doesn't have a lot of introspection, right? I'm still not seeing a lot of introspection. I'm seeing performative introspection, but real introspection is actually like change comes with introspection. He's been offered another cupcake. Let's see what he does. Like, that's the thing is like, I feel like he keeps taking the cupcake. He like licks it for a while and then eventually goes, I don't want it. And let's see what he does with this cupcake. Like, is he actually going to take it or is he going to pretend to take it? Which is what he's really good at. He's really good at pretending to take the cupcake, right? I just want to see his energy in this video. Like, not watch it, but his energy. Where she neither credits the original creator nor really adds much commentary to it. Uh, that got a... Which caused Leah to overreact by personal safety at risk, harm our community, and behavior on both sides isn't what we want on YouTube. Hoping everyone helps move this conversation to a better place. But for someone like Sniper Wolf, even that would be a slap on the wrist. This is like when they find big oil companies a million dollars when they make that much in like 30 minutes. What I really want to focus on is that they say that the behavior on both sides is not uh, personal safety. Okay, let me say it like this. <sighs> He's been self-aware before, but his brief moments of self-awareness are all talk. Okay, listen to this. Self-awareness to me, when I'm talking about introspection, I'm talking about things that keep, even if you go back to being like a human and you like have faults and moments. When I say you can't unlearn what you know at a certain point, it's like he's not really learning it. He's pretending to learn it and performatively giving the right answers. But because he actually actually hasn't learned it necessarily, who knows? And we'll know in the next like month or so or two months to see how it is. But it feels like he really struggles to learn the actual lesson versus versus actually having a moment of introspection, like a moment of real change. But let's see. You know what I mean? Why would anyone intentionally claim to be a covert narcissist? The internet is uh, rabid towards narcissists. Um, I don't know. Maybe, well, why would he do anything he's done so far? Because he thinks it's a good idea. But like maybe it's a horrible idea. Do you know what I'm saying? He's made lots of bad ideas, lots of bad choices. What's another bad choice? I truly think he is a covert narcissist, 100%. I mean, maybe, yeah. I don't know. I'm not, you know, I can't diagnose him. But maybe. He will eat uh, actual cupcake, but not a knowledge cupcake. It is what it is, girls. It is what it is. Sounds like a one roller coaster. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe he's a one. Maybe he's not. I just don't know. I need to know the why. And that's really the key of it. 
is like when you look through the levels, the best way to figure out if someone's a why if or a one is kind of like if there's no why for their actions. There's no real understanding of the why other than they choose to do it. So if you're going through and you're trying to figure out if someone's a, a one, there has to be a real reason why. So for him, it could be his narcissism. Oh, that's why he does it. Okay, that means not a one to an extent, right? To an extent until... Well, because the thing with narcissism is that it's really difficult to get better when you're a narcissist. So that could be a good enough reason. It's a hard enough mental illness. And some people lose themselves to their mental illness. And some people can't like, see, that's the problem is like, it's hard to be introspective if the thing that's louder than your consciousness is like an illness. But if your consciousness is louder than your illness, you have an opportunity to be introspective enough to have a relationship with your illness. And that takes a level of introspection. Like that narcissist on TikTok who does really well for himself, he's at a certain level of introspection that allows him to be healthy and functional as a narcissist. And that's really fascinating to watch, actually. So there is a level of like relationship he's having with his consciousness to be successful and not just monetarily, like in life, like he's chilling. You know what I mean? So again, we're not just talking about money as success. We're talking about like understanding like life, being like moving through life at, in a reasonable way. What has he shared about his childhood? Boogie, personally, um, that he was severely abused as a child, physically abused. And I could be wrong. Was there some smexual stuff? I'm, I don't want to get demonetized here, but like, was there some, I can't remember, but I thought there was, but I could be very wrong and I don't want to put that rumor out there. But why do I feel like there was some very bad childhood abuse? I mean, all of it's bad, but I could be wrong. So I don't know to what level he was abused. But it is one of those things. I wonder if he's paying alimony. He is as far as I know or was. I think his wife got more than even like, I think she got like, I think she wanted basically like very little and he gave her uh, quite a lot. So I think they settled their divorce pretty well, if I'm not mistaken. It takes time too and some faith that the distortions in your head might be false, which when your mentally, mental illness is loud can take a while. Exactly. Yeah. Intentional practice, except yeah, 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 I agree. Well, let's see what he does. I'm rooting for him to get better as I'm rooting for all people to get better. You know what I mean? Um, yes, Brit. Always cheering for him, but he can only help himself. I agree. I followed him back in the day, OG, in OG YouTube land. So it's nostalgic but tragic to see his t pipeline. Yeah, I really, I'm excited for him to get better. I hope he does. Um, we'll see. In my head, in real life while I'm dead, my belly's being fed. I'm okay, I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine, not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense, I've been nothing but blessed, so why's my life a mess, please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking, yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth, and living life as a fool. Dun, 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 dun.